We're all doing the fade down. Hey, it's the Bennington Show. I'm uh, Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yep. And I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm. Uh, that's the Urge uh, Overkill version of that song. That's right. What was the first one? Neil Diamond? Neil Diamond. And then I saw someone, Rafferty does like a cover. Jerry Rafferty? I, I don't know. I just... Because if that's true, I've never heard it before. <laughs> and it's like very... It's like even slower. Does it, it say, girl, you'll be a woman soon on Baker Street? <laughs> no. Uh, you know, Urge Overkill, I guess because they're in the movie, you almost forget that Neil Diamond... I know. ...exists on this planet. And the Diamond Heads would probably be furious with me for saying that. But you know what I'm thinking right now? Could this be Quentin Tarantino week? It could. I mean, who's to stop us, right? This is our show. We call the shots. This is our show down here. It's their show up there. Um, But with Tarantino songs, we may have to take an entire month. (laughs) A month of Tarantino. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. I would do that and then play a different Tarantino movie every (laughs) night. I I haven't heard if he's got anything new planned. I have not heard either. Um, I don't know if he's he's got something in the works. I need you to be my Tarantino correspondent. And you're also my social game player. I got social game, Quintino guy, Quintarantino guy. Here's why I want this social game to be on. Today I walk in and I see up on the board, welcome to Diane Lane. Well, I almost scream. I'm so excited. I go, I'm going to see Diane Lane somewhere in this building. And then I check with my old social guy, my old social game guy. And I'm like, is Diane Lane here? And he's like, oh, well, I could check. And I'm like, that. Why, why aren't we all freaking out? We have a chance to see Cherry Valance. Apparently she was in with Andy Cohen. And gone. They said, literally really? just floated into the mist. She said, I hope I never see Ron Bennington again. That's a good one. That's a good impression. <laughs> uh, she's doing some kind of, but here's where she is in her midlife. They, she always, her movies are this. She broke up with some bad husband. And she's traveling through a wonderful place and finding herself. <laughs> These are, it's not even... Chick flicks, it's mom flicks, because you know something sexy happens to yeah. her. She has wine, and she <laughs> uh, has delicious, fantastic food, right. and she's in a wonderful, fucking little villa somewhere. And these films, as cliche as I laid out there, are incredibly watchable. You know why? Why? Two words: Diane Lane. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough for anyone. She is gorgeous at every point of her life. By the way, uh, Mikey, my friend Mikey D, was doing either a Broadway or off-Broadway play with her when they were kids, right? According to him, they kissed. I don't know. (laughs) She then gets cast in a movie, leaves, I think, before the play opens. Because they just had the reunion not too long ago, and she, she went to the reunion. And she's in her first movie. She's age 14. She gets the cover of Time magazine for that movie. And she's 14 years old, and the whole country went, she's beautiful. And here she is 40 years later or whatever, almost 40 years, and everybody still feels the same way. There's never yeah. been a time that people went, hey, what's up with Diane Lane? She let herself go. <laughs> Doesn't happen with Diane Lane. No. Her sister, Penny Lane, <laughs> was an almost famous. <laughs> that was her sister? Step. Step oh, sister. Okay. That's why it'd be okay if they kissed. <laughs> anyway, Vito, I bored everyone with my middle aged woman talk. <laughs> so we're going to move on. What do you want to talk about, Gail? Uh, so up on the iBang, uh, there is uh, this video that is the evolution of the bro. Mm hmm. So this is a bro, a douchey bro throughout the ages. Mm-hmm. It's like that iconic douche look. And the well, way give me an example from. of, let's say I would say the 1980s 
Uh, bro, who would it be? That would be like every bad boyfriend in an 80s movie. They usually tend to be like a little preppy, mm-hmm. very stylized. All right, so the, 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 the asshole from Valley Girl. Who was like, right. is this a 3D? Yeah. <laughs> no, but your face is. <laughs> exactly. That guy. Um, all right. So let's go through this. They also picked a guy who kind of has pretty. Uh, there's a 1940s, bro. Stop it for a second. <laughs> he almost gives off an Errol Flynn vibe. Would you say... Earl Flynn was the bro? I went, he's a bare knuckle boxer, this dude. I don't know if those guys were bros. But I mean, I, he's he's tough. All right, he's you, athletic. Yeah. See, uh, I'm going to give you the bad guy in what's the famous 1940s uh, book where you went uh, out to Long Island? Uh, uh, Gatsby. All right. So Gatsby's her husband. Right. And he looked like that, and he was definitely a bro. Because here's the thing that we're already establishing. Yeah. There's a toughness. And a sportiness. Yes. But there's also very groomed. You can't just be like a kind of disheveled guy who's tough. Right. That's not going to be a douche. Yeah, th- that's more of a dude. Right. Where this guy, uh, yeah, because you know where you learn how to fucking bear, bear, uh, bear knuckle, bo- that was a Yale thing. You know what I mean? Like regular oh. guys. Wait, there's Andy Cohen. So is Andy, uh, is Stanley with him now? No, she had, le- she left her previously. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why don't you just give me a belt that has my name on it and I'll hang myself with it? <laughs> that will never happen again under my watch. Thank you, Vito. Oh my God. Social, you are the social game guy. He's kind of a social justice warrior in many have, ways. <laughs> have you um have you picked out your co host chef for Big Brother in the holding company? We're still holding auditions right now. Seriously? Yeah. Chris, you don't want to go back to that. You got too many shows as it is. I'm holding company. What what shows did I recently hear that you were on? I was on the uh, Real Ass Podcast. Mm, nice. Sweet gig. That's a sweet, good get for I've you. I've been trying to get on that for some time. I've never been asked. I'm trying to get my P- PR person, Sam, to get me on that right now. <laughs> All right, let's go. So the 1940s, and we're thinking Daisy's husband was a right. douche bro there. 50s. Now, 50s was kind of a greaser look, and I kind of yeah, because there was there was a very preppy vibe. I would feel like I feel like you'd be the guy that hated the greaser boyfriend. Yeah, you'd be a soch, really. Yes, to put it in terms that Diane Lane could understand. Well, this was this was the thing about Diane Lane though that was genius. See, the greasers then it was past the time of the greaser. So there's always, so like being a greaser in the fifties is pretty cool. Being a greaser in the sixties or seventies. Yeah, not good. Is, it's straight out almost stupid. <laughs> almost what you would just say, just straight white trash. In fact, I have another version. Actually, I might hold off because it might be a sixties thing. Well, go ahead and give it. All right. So who, who were the guys who were everyone else was kind of doing long hair and they were doing that like, like, high top, like that kind of shaved side, very military look. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like buzzed on the side and very, oh, flat top. That's what it called, like the flat. Oh, see, I would think that the flat top would be the dumbest ever, but some of the astronauts did it. Right. And then what that meant, it was just that you were a clean Marine. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But I don't know. I don't agree that 50s would be greaser. You know, that's Fonzie. Yeah. You've got to go with the preppy. Yeah, there had to be a certain look. Um, I'd say George Hamilton and and where the boys are, which might have been early 60s. But again, it looked like a blue blood. You know what I mean? It looked like you were doing too well. Born on third, thought you hit a triple. All right, let's keep going. They've even greased it up more. Yeah, yeah. For I'm, the 60s. Again, this is lazy. Sixties, I I would think is a much more like athlete type yeah. and even military type because you've got to think a time where people are moving towards wearing long hair. Yeah, you've got to be like I'm not one of those guys. Right. But my life is good. It's not like I'm angry every day. Right. See, the thing about that fucking thing is they think that life is leisure. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like. Life is very good for them. All right, 70s. Ah, 
I don't think that look even existed in the 70s. This is what I was going to ask you. It's one of those things where it's like, we certainly think this existed, but is this just like some stereotype, like a couple dudes looked like this? I mean, he's going for like a porn guy. You know what I mean? Right. Is a mullet that he has? Um, or like a rat tail, I guess? He has a rat tail. Yeah, but mullet. I don't know. See, the thing is, that little mullet started with Ziggy Stardust. So it didn't really catch on with the general population until much later. So who were, like, the uncool dudes of the 70s then? Like, while everybody else was doing something cool, what were they doing? Uh, They were probably going to a Carpenters concert. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, you want to think they were probably the type of people who were, like, up with people or thought that Nixon was right. You know what I mean? Right. So you really want to look at those establishment type people, you know? I don't know. I think they I think they've kind of missed missed the boat with this. The douche boat. <laughs> All right. Now here's where I think it's pretty accurate. This is kind of the look of similar vibe to what I was saying. Yeah. The bad boyfriend in an eighties movie. Sunglasses, like... A guy in the 80s who said to his girlfriend, we're going to see Tom Cruise tonight. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. And after that, we're going to cruise for a while. And then him and his friends might say stuff like they would high-five and say, I'm in the need for speed. (laughs) (laughs) This is kind of like, that's like the introduction for me to do sculpture. Is the eighties douche? Well, that uh, the douche the douche boat was kind of was that dream boat and a douchebag at the same time. Right. So when you went to a movie in the eighties, the girl, the guy that you thought uh, that she thought was the right guy, we all knew was the wrong guy. Right. <laughs> and they did that time after time again. It's every movie in the eighties, I think. It was every movie in the eighties, <laughs> and like he. <laughs> He like they usually were handsome. Like she had to see something in that guy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like, he was a handsome guy. Money. He probably yeah. He came from money. He had a nice car. He had nice clothes, and he was uh, acting like he was a sensitive guy. Yeah, but he wasn't. He's not right for her. And this is the peak of that. Yeah, like this is where I think the douche culture just really took off. It's purest form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's absolute douche purity. You're right. Like, if this was fucking coke, we would be looking at each other like, we can step on this ten fucking times and still they'll line up for it. You'd have to step on fucking 80s douche, douche boat to get to anybody else. And would we say Tom Cruise is that guy? I mean, if you look at the women that... He got, and then that all left him. You know what I mean? Right. Like all yeah. these beautiful women he gets, and then they're like, he's a weirdo with the Scientology. You know? Right. I thought he was a like, regular guy, <laughs> but he's fucking trying to hold that over me all the time. Right. There's, um, there is a lot of people who kind of embodied that as characters, but I think he actually was that. Like, like if you think, life. if you think, um, what's the friend in Pretty in Pink? What's his name? Sp- um, James Spader. James Spader. Oh, I thought we were going for his real name. Yeah. <laughs> Spader was fucking unbelievable yeah. as that. Where he just thought he, he like, was worried about his friend. Right. He has like a white suit, yeah. open shirt. Gorgeous. <laughs> great right. Very and handsome. Great hair. Like, Why are you with that pig? And then he wants to pound his friend's yeah. fucking girl just so he could put his penis in the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, but he stole the movie. He stole the fucking Agreed. movie. Agreed. I mean, if he would have walked in, even while Ducky was dancing, that would have spread you still would have been looking at Spader. <laughs> and looking like he was lounging no matter what he was doing. <laughs> it's a great look. We're never going to get past uh, the wonderful ladies. All right, let's see the 90s. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's All like right. Raver guy? Yeah, it's like um it's the kind of guy who went to the like the <laughs> <It's> second Fido. <laughs> Fido <laughs> <or> rave. 
It's right. like the guys who ruined the like the nineties Woodstock. Yeah, like, yeah that, right. Like that dude that would thought it was cool to write big uh, light big fires. <laughs> First of all, puka shells is the greatest thing that ever been invented. Right. But those but those sunglasses. Perfect. And look at this stupid hat. And the visor. Up, upside, upside down. Upside down visor and sideways. <laughs> but see, here's where I'm going to go with a different thing here, though. This guy thought he was fun. Where the 80s douche bro didn't think he was fun. He thought he was cool, All but right. he was a dick. Right. This guy would be like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. You know? Well, like, the way they dressed him, he's kind of like friends with the douchebag. Because right. there's always like, you know how like, they always do have like one fun friend? A where fun you're, like, party guy? I wish that guy wasn't funny. And I wish he was hanging out with a different crowd because he's pretty. Because this is to put him in the body bag. Yeah, <laughs> he'd be yelling, "Put him in the body bag!" And he's getting. This is the guy who gets off on this fact that his friend fucked a cute girl. You right. Know what I mean, like, yeah, bro. But he doesn't get, get to sleep with anybody. Yeah. He ain't getting it. You know, <laughs> you pounded it good. It's they so got it on. Yeah. Now a lot of people wrote to me and said that uh, Chris. Ripped off fucking stuff guy with your tuna thing the other day. Oh, come but on. But you were this guy to Dave. The way that you <laughs> idolized this side, Dave. And you were very happy with whatever Dave got. Oh, like, sure. Yeah, we'll get it. We're doing it, buddy. Where's my visor? Um, There was a term actually during the 90s called curtain boy. And that was the guy who toured, was very excited about the show, but his job was to pull the curtain back right. <laughs> and let all the comics walk through. And he was, to me, it doesn't work without him. Mm -hmm. He was like the hype man. Yeah, you need that guy. Now, that guy went on to be a big writer, producer. I don't know what else. I, I'm, I'm done giving compliments. But the thing is, <laughs> this guy can grow into something. All right, the 2000s. By the way, the guy who's doing this is great. He yeah, he has a perfect face right, for it. This is the guy that Vito <laughs> wanted to be. The spray on tan. Spray tan. Uh, <laughs> some sort of a, almost like a tiny choker. Again, terrible sunglasses. Ridiculous hair. And very, I mean, having, having a very, I want to say like just like a lot of product in your hair yeah. seems to be a theme throughout. Yeah, you got to care about that hair. To almost to a fucking bad extent. Okay, hair carers. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> and of course, you're not going to get this through through uh, through the video, but I think scent is also pretty important. Like they tend to they tend to cologne and they tend to have a lot of hair products. You know what? What we're saying is, what are the Italians doing in every decade? <laughs> right, right. So the douche bro in the '70s was the fucking guy next to John Travolta, right? Right. He's He's going, Travolta's wearing that, so I'm going to wear this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the guy in the 60s was the guy yelling, love it or leave it, at fucking hippies. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> it's Italians it's throughout the years. That's what it is. Ita Italians through the decades. Italians, it's something even worse. Want to be Italians. Oh, yeah. God. So you take a fucking wasp guy... Who acts like he's a Jersey Shore yeah, guy. Yeah, like the one blonde guy yeah. hanging out on the Jersey Shore with right. the whole Italian. So, you know, you got every right. You have every right to be the fucking guy. Yeah. But it's the guys who literally, I guess it exists, the wannabe Vito. Yeah, they're like blonde hair, blue eyed, and they're just like, God, let's get some gabagool, you know what I mean? <laughs> what did you like, say? <laughs> By the way, the, I saw this thing the other day. It was some kind of reunion of the cast of Heathers, right? Mm-hmm. They claim that they invented the fist bump. What? That it really? never... Because they had the douche bros in that fucking movie, Yeah, right? very much the, so. I love my gay son. <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, those guys weren't gay, right? They just fucking no, they, lined that up. they set them up to look like they... Because she tried to make it look like she was going to bang both of them. Right. Then they were killed, and then they kind of, like, made it look like they were gay. Yeah. Isn't that a sexual encounter? Isn't that even what she did, kind of a homophobia? Yes, like, of course. Like, here's the worst thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so. But I don't know who did it in that. Maybe it was those guys. Oh, it was True TV does this thing. Uh, and it's unbelievably watchable. But it's just like uh, a life and comedy about one movie, right? It's like the inside series where they go back to people. Every movie, 
No one expected us to make it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> then the first, I mean, it just follows. Nobody this. starts with, we had a tremendous amount of support. <laughs> yes. I mean, considering the uh, script wasn't great, right. we did well. <laughs> but every time it's like, they didn't want Sean Penn. It's hard to believe it. <laughs> wow. But they fought us on Sean Penn. <laughs> and then we found out a week before, they weren't going to advertise. So we thought it was over. <laughs> and then there were lines around the block, and I'm at home like this. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Show those motherfuckers, those Hollywood corporate pricks. I could watch it endlessly. <laughs> but they claim they invented the uh, fist bump. I love that. I mean, I, could you even... I, I can't have, argue it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I do remember when the... Remember when you used to just hit forearms? Yeah. That came from the... Uh, from the Bash Brothers, the Oakland A's. Where you're going. Right. And the reason why is somebody normally had a bat in their hand. So you just hit a fucking home run. <laughs> you came around, you wanted the high five. But you couldn't. couldn't. The Dodgers invented the high five. Really? Again, the same exact way of, you're, you know, somebody just hit a home run. You're coming up to the fucking dugout and everyone's got their right. hands up. High five, high so five, high five. Were fives happening? Low fives were happening? Like people were... Well, the, well I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. the first type that started as a skin, skin me. Yeah, so it skin. wasn't a slap and it was like a jazz. I'm just giving you some skin. Give me why, some skin, Flynn. I don't know why they did that. And then that became into more of a hippie. Hey, you know. Right. What that came from is White guys interacting with black guys. Okay, gotcha. Cultural appropriation. Um, yes, but using the culture itself. You weren't, it didn't start like, let's make fun of or let's act like we're black. It came from, hey, Daddy O, I dig where you're coming from, black gotcha. dude. And you're invited here to smoke uh, reefer with us. But the fist pump, I have no, I don't, I'm mean, fist pump, that just seemed like it happened. Yeah. But it didn't seem like, when did Heather's come out? Like late 80s? I would have thought, yeah, Mid very late 80s. very late 80s or early 90s. So I don't remember that catching on then. It didn't seem like it really caught on until the 2000s. And then by the time people did the explosion, you know, blow it up. <laughs> right. I couldn't, I, I never once <laughs> let yeah. myself explode. Heather's was 88. All right. Um. Randy in Philly. What's up, buddy? What's going on, Bennington? Yeah. Hey, about the douchebag video, I got a comment about it. Go ahead. Well, those guys tend to get lots of chicks, so they got to be doing something right. I mean, there's guys like Stanley that are talking shit about them, and then those guys are just beating off the gay porn every night. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> We're not saying that, that they're not getting women. A lot of it has to do with their status and the fact that they know yeah. how to uh they know how to disguise themselves yes. right they know how to disguise themselves as sensitive and then also become that fucking dick guy when they're around the other bros and i think that what's important here and which is where the evolution of the douchebag style video Mrs. Mark sometimes is a lot of times I think you've got to say that person's got to have money. Like the 70s mm -hmm. dude did not look like a guy with money. No. And so therefore they can't really be the iconic person because you have to have all the power. Yeah, well, you have to be attractive. You have to have money. It's waspy. Yeah. It's waspy culture. But what about guys like Stanley and their gay porn jacking off and stuff? Well, They're good too. You know, I mean, again, you're being homophobic by even saying that. Thank the you. fact that he does it uh, means that he's okay with him. I that's what you know? he enjoys, and we I, don't judge um, him. Don't yeah, do that's that. cool. That's cool. But, Randy, your thing of, uh, of just using gay porn as a, look, this is wrong, you kind of got a, a main line, a Philly main line thing. Mm -hmm. now, you know that if you're from <laughs> Philly. When we said she's going out with a guy from the main line, we met like this is almost impossible yeah. for me to fight about uh, against because their dads are big in the corporations. It's the way we refer to as Sun Valley because we knew that their dads were white collar guys, blah blah blah. But Sun Valley, I mean, there would be a shadow of them from the main line. Yeah, you know, my boyfriend's mother describes things as very main line that have nothing to do with the main line. And he has to explain to her, that's not an adjective outside of where we live. You can't just say, oh, it's not. It's very mainline. 
You know what I mean? Very I think she's using it perfectly. <laughs> Something is, oh, I wouldn't spend the money on that, but somebody has it. It's a very, very main line. Now, I'm going to, I think more interesting is when that douchey guy became a hero to people, okay, uh, which was the 80s. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Before that, you wanted to beat that guy in every movie. But I think if you look at um, the movie Animal House, right, where you're supposed to be cheering for fucking Tim Matheson, you know what I mean? Right. And here it is during the war, and he's a golfer making fun. uh, uh, And, you know, everybody is happy that Belushi smashed the beatniks thing. Like, Mm -hmm. who were you sitting around singing sensitive songs? Good. Break his fucking guitar while we do what we consider the African dance to shout. But Tim Matheson, and then, of course, that role was supposed to go to Chevy Chase, who was the real, look at him in the golfing movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Caddyshack, he's a fucking douchebag who has no sensitivity towards anything besides his, he has unfucking cash checks just sitting around yeah. on his desk when you know the kid needs money to get into college, but he doesn't give a fuck about anything. So that is like when the culture, if you really look when the, the U.S. culture changed, it was the 80s on, it was the Reagan era. Right. And look at those things, and we root for those fucking guys now. Yeah. Instead of we've got to beat the Chevy Chases, we're like, <laughs> isn't it great? <laughs> Chevy Chase doesn't give a fuck about anything because he's born rich. Um, hey, uh, Craig, Craig in Illinois. Yes. Yeah, what's yes. up? Hey, uh, my understanding was the fist bump was possibly designed for Ali Mandel because he doesn't like to – shake hands with anyone. He's certainly a, a, a famous uh, fist bumper. You know who was also before he ran for president? Trump. I Trump know. Trump was yeah. a fist, was supposedly a strong germaphobe, and when he went out on the thing and everybody was grabbing it, you know, when he was running for president, is when he broke himself of that. Right. He was like, I can't look like Humans disgust me. By the way, here's here's the perfect look. The Trump boys. Yeah. The Trump right. boys always put together well. Uh, certainly fall in line with the family business. And then catch planes to Africa to shoot right. beautiful animals. <laughs> For on, photo shoots. On another, on another uh, fucking continent. For their Instagram. <laughs> What are you going to do? You got to get the gun over there? You can't take your own gun, right? I don't know how. I think you can get a license, like, because I'm sure guys, like, have their own guns that they like to fucking shoot with. You right, have to but, check but I'm saying, do you check your fucking long yeah. rifle check- into the into the plane? Yeah, you check it, yeah. It's weird. Seems <laughs> odd. It does seem very strange. So like, what do you need? <laughs> what are you fucking shooting, an elephant? Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully more than one. Man, they're all over those guys today, too, about the fucking Russia stuff. Just never goes away. Every day, Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Get the new idea. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, what's on your mind? You're the social guy for the You're the show. social. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to be the social guy. I want you to pop your collar, too, for now on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the uh, the current Bro, like that's the current bro look. He's the winner, bro. Just get some sunglasses now. Wear them like upside down. Your mom bought you those new glasses. What have you done with them? Oh yeah, they're they're at home. Um, yeah, my mom bought me glasses. She comes home and she just goes, "What's the one thing that everybody on the Bennington show has that you don't have?" And I didn't Tell know what it. to say. <laughs> that was one guest. And <laughs> my own apartment was another. And she goes, "No." <laughs> Open up this bag, <laughs> and it's just a pair of aviator sunglasses. It's so great! It's really cute. And then uh, your when mom's we, the sweetest person ever. She's very nice. She's probably listening. Hi, mom. Uh, and she kept texting me during our trip, saying, "Have you taken a picture with your sunglasses yet?" <laughs> and you didn't. You were never wearing those. Were you glasses. nervous? No, I just kept forgetting them. 
I want you to do a photo shoot in their sunglasses. <laughs> Please. I'll bring them in tomorrow and do a photo sh- shoot with it. Yeah. And I'll wear my Indiana Jones hat, too. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah. that in. Please bring that in. Tomorrow I will start the show wearing my Indiana Jones hat and aviator sunglasses. Honestly, well. your mom's going to be so happy because she knows you never wear that hat. That was you a waste should. Of That's why you weren't allowed to get the <laughs> black Bart hat, which I looked at that picture. It looked great to you. Thank you. I, I felt the same way, but she shut Sorry. me down. <laughs> You should have went for the hat, dude. I know. I think about it every night. <laughs> really? <laughs> I really do. Every night I thought, man, it would be really cool if I could have went to work wearing a black cowboy hat tomorrow. Every night he's just like, this sleep would be so much better if I just had a hat just right over my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the uh, New York comedy scene, uh, Joe List, Sarah Tullamash, Pete Lee all crushed. On late night, show. they traveled across the board and caught all the big late night shows. Joe List did Conan, Sarah Tolmos did, um, what the hell's the name of it? Uh, Colbert and Pete Lee did, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Now I gotta tell you the, uh, Pete Lee story. So there was, Jimmy Fallon lives pretty much right around the corner from the stand, right? So one night he comes over to the stand, Pete Lee's on stage, and Pete's doing his fucking routine, and he drops one joke, and fucking Fallon jumps up and starts applauding mid-routine, right? So after, he's like, we got to get you on the show. We got to get you on the Tonight Show. Uh, And so, you know, they do the thing where the booker is following Pete around for a long time, like, let's take this out, blah, blah, blah. Finally, Friday night. He gets uh, to do it. And uh, he goes in and crushes, gets a standing ovation his first night on The Tonight Show. And he goes out for a steak dinner. (laughs) Of course. And goes uh, to the stand. And I mean, comes floating through the door that tell, you know, the story. So I'm hosting that night. And I kind of put this, you know how I can be an asshole and really fucking drama something up. So I start to tell this story to the audience. You could have fucking heard a pin drop during the intro. And then I get all the way up and, you know, and I am finally like, and here he is three hours after his standing ovation, put it together for a man having the best night of his life, Pete Lee. And Pete comes up still in his suit. <laughs> Fucking tears. In his oh, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbing the mic. It's so sweet. <laughs> uh, you know, he stays, he does the second show. And this was also really fun. Jim Norton dropped in that night. So Jim is hanging. Florentine is there. And there's all kinds of comics. It's, everybody's hanging out. And at, you know, 12, 20 or whatever, we all watch with Pete. Holy shit, man. That is so awesome. I watched it, and I was just fucking floored. Yeah. Like, he did such an incredible job, and the audience went fucking bananas for him. Like, you know how we always talk about that, the the applause breaks that are just yeah. understood yeah. In, in stand-up when you're doing it on late night? It was like belly laughter throughout his whole set. You could hear... Big laughs, and they just grew and grew and grew. Like, by the end of the set, like, people, it's just, you could hear really genuine, huge laughter from the audience. And then everyone pops up, and he gets a standing ovation. I was so happy for him. Do you know how, like, you know, everybody likes Pete, right? But all the waitresses that have seen this set time and time again... Adele, who manages uh, and runs the place, the other fucking comics, like that moment of watching them watch the show was fucking so great. It was so great. When you when you think he's probably, I don't know, worked well over a decade to get to that spot. Yeah. And then you're there with him when he gets it. It's really exciting. 
and he's ju- he really is the sweetest dude. So that makes it all the better when you're celebrating with someone like that because he's such a sweetheart. Yeah, it's uh, it's the strangest thing. I love when Fallon came up at the end. Like, hey, standing on base. Uh, this was the other sweet thing too. So Emily uh, Tarver, who's Pete's girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any pictures. There might be at the iBank. But she was wearing this beautiful dress, right? Pete's with it. And I'm looking at them watching it. And it, they look like a NASA couple, but it's 1962. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like they were in their fucking zone. It's just the cutest picture. They look great. Yeah, oh, wow. they look fantastic. But I wish that I had a picture of you. But see how, don't they look like a NASA couple? They do. <laughs> uh, they also said that uh, uh, Jimmy uh, hung out with them. But I'm trying to think who was there. Norton was hanging out. Uh, Derek Gaines, Dante Nero. Um, Ari Shafir was there that night and was incredibly happy for them. And Ari said Florentine, uh, Paul Italia. It was really, really... Uh, it was really, really cool to be there for that. I'm so happy for him. You know what? Uh, the other day we were having uh, Jen Dish, because you said that she always knows all the gossip. She right? does. I go to her for as my gossip source. So whenever I need uh, need a, just the inside scoop, mm-hmm. she's ready to dish. So let's dish with Jen. Come on in here, Jen. I want to see you in here. Let's dish. <laughs> Get your gossip now. Uh-huh. Let's dish. Vito, you're the production genius of the show, right? <laughs> I feel that way. <laughs> you got to do something for less dish. We, I want some excitement. Yeah, something before good. Jen dishes. Now, Jen is wearing a sweatshirt with a rose over each breast. <laughs> uh, is that done on purpose? No. I okay. Don't think so. So it. it <laughs> It takes a perv. That's what it, it takes a perv. It's a fineness. It's like when you're in the mall and there's that stupid thing and every, no one else sees the sailboat. <laughs> Do those things even around anymore? The magic eye? I don't, I have Is not. Is that what they're called? Magic eye. I haven't seen one in a really long time, but there was like mall a stretch. Mall rats was the last time yeah. I saw it. <laughs> By this way, I was watching Chasing Amy the other day. And that movie is so dated in terms of technology. Mm-hmm. Technology and the F uh, and the other F word. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the guy actually gets a Ben Affleck gets a page. Oh, it's awesome! And has to call. <laughs> That's it's fucking page. hilarious. I'm in page. Yeah. No <laughs> his pager blew up because his girlfriend wanted him. <laughs> All right, so Jen, let's dish. Okay. Yeah. So the story that just came out yesterday was Chris Rock cheated on his um, ex-wife with Carrie Washington, who's a star of Scandal. Whoa. Well, that's that's uh, Scandal now, within did, a Scandal. Now, who brought that out? Because I I understand Chris has been saying stuff on stage. Yeah. He, so he went on stage and was te- like. I guess, like, telling a story about how he used to dog out his wife, his ex-wife, I mean. And- <laughs> I, I got news for you. I have never heard the term dog out, so this is all really? news to me. Yeah. This is, this is all ready. I'm be dogging out all kinds of it. <laughs> so uh, he said that he cheated on her with a, he cheated on her with a, um, a, one famous, one semi-famous, and a member of the retail class. Jesus. No, I am like not. I, I, I have to mention that. So the semi-famous, I wonder what that even means to be semi-famous. What is reality star? <laughs> Instagram model? Oh, that's good. That's I call true. it semi-famous. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's true. What was her name? Summer? Summer Rae? <laughs> you guys for a while? I think that's famous. That's yeah. <laughs> now, hasn't, we talked about this, hasn't Summer Rae bypassed Jen? Yeah, Jen Selter, yeah. She's, Summer Rae is the ass queen of Instagram. She has moved, like, it's not even close anymore. No, it's by millions that she has, she's above and following. And Jen Selter's just been demoted to ass duchess? What's happened to her? Ass duchess. Is duchess what she is. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jen Selter's more of a fitness model now, and Summer Rae's more of an IG body model. Body model? Did you say IG? Yeah, IG. 
What's that? Instagram. Uh, Instagram people. Okay. IG mouse. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess she dogged her out. And you really, <laughs> I'm using it too fast. That's why I fucked up. I used it too fast. <laughs> so Chris Rock is very comfortable talking about these things now. Yes. Yeah. And they were on, it was supposedly when they both uh, did the movie, I Think I Love My Wife. Wow. <laughs> Which is very erotic. <laughs> and he was supposedly <laughs> separated with his ex-wife at the time. But he was in hell with her, supposedly. Carrie <laughs> <laughs> but- Washington doesn't seem like she's easy either. That's you know? I know. She seems like, uh, you know, she likes she likes yeah. to be treated well. I would, yeah, that's like <laughs> what I would call the gen maintenance <laughs> right. uh, thing. Because you know that if you... Uh, Dated Jen, you'd be just looking at your Amex bill all the right. time. Like, what the fuck? Oh, you got to factor in maintenance. You definitely yeah. do. Yeah. Jen wants one of those Very things where there's fun. fucking flowers lining up Ugh. the stairway leading toward the oh, bedroom. Some- and Carrie and me have the same birthday. So for some reason, Stop. I do feel like she has the same mentality as me. Stop. Where did Where did you get that from? Her birthday? No, where did you get this oh, mentality? mentality? I guess Because you weren't up, raised that way, were you? They, was your dad like of. fancy things? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My, my mom and my yeah. dad are a little bougie. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're like Chris. You would grow up like Chris Stanley. Yeah, yeah I like, like the finer things. <laughs> 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 All right, so that's uh, let's give us another dish. So David Spade and Naya Rivera are dating. They he's always <laughs> dating somebody beautiful, right? Yeah, I he mean, is. like since fucking ninety two, <laughs> he's been with gorgeous women. But I didn't. I wouldn't think he'd be with her because she's kind of like crazy. All right, let me say. Well, uh, look, she's from Glee. Yeah, I don't know who Glee is, but <laughs> stunning. The TV show. She's, stunning. she's young, too, right? Well, th- what are you going to do? See him with somebody his own age? He's going to do that. Yeah, no, he's David Spade. Spade. <laughs> he's fucking living large. Oh, my God. Look at that, like, Barbie bod she's got going there. Uh, yeah. uh, did you think she had work on the tit stuff? Um, you know, I would say yes, but you know, a lot, you can do a lot with those, um, yeah, you know, you tape oh, the them up. Things? Yeah. She, she, she she did. It was like a big deal during Glee. I watched, okay. I watched Glee all the way through. Uh, in between seasons, she got a breast job, and everybody made a really big deal about it. Now, here's the uh, thing. I say this is the test. If you can break a stick over them, right? right. And she doesn't notice. She doesn't even flinch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So David Spade still doing well. Doing well for After himself. 25 years of celeb dating. Good job. <laughs> All right, you got another dish? And uh, Dave Chappelle is going to be in the movie uh, A Star is Born. It's a remake with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I don't know about this <laughs> idea of the... Uh, it seems like Lady Gaga is a little too past the point where she could be playing the... Yeah. Like, if you would have done this, what was it, six years ago when she broke or something? Yeah. That might have been perfect. I but think she's had too much negative attention at this point. Like, just in the way that it's just tired. Right. Not, not negative like scandal, but negative like, uh, I think we've, we've I put, it's run its course maybe. See, I think to make this thing work, you got two things. You go straight black cast, right? <laughs> and you do it as hip hop because that can explode like that. You yeah. know what I mean? And pop star because that's what you need. And, you know, you have somebody who's older and they're already in trouble. You know what I mean? Like the way yeah. hip hop stars get themselves in trouble <laughs> is fucking, you know, that would be a really great story. Or you go totally white with these country people <laughs> and it's the same way that you could be classic country and you're still famous, but you're not getting your songs played on the radio anymore. All right. Exactly. I wish they would just let me make every I movie. I could you just have fucking, all the right, you all have all the right ideas. I like to say all the right moves, just like the Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> Um, but this is a tough one. Oh, what was that Gale picture for? New Gale Meets Girls. Wow, yeah. we should have been promoting that for I an know, hour. No, we should have did that first. Uh, there's a new episode of Gale Meets Girls up at the Interrobang. It's Aparna Nancherla and Jacqueline Novak, and it was so much fun. They're both super, super funny. And- Aparna just made Rolling Stone's top 50 funniest people. Yes. And... Jacqueline Novak was hysterical. Yeah, she's so thing. so funny. She she's super super funny. It was a um, really great one. Yeah, I had a I had a great time with both of them. So check it out. Uh, go to the Interrobang 
dot com to download. And Johnny Gogo will be happy to know that they don't look incredibly taller than you. I know, just slightly. By the way, I went to go see. Uh, I saw Aparna last night uh, at the Bell House in Brooklyn. And when she came out to the city, she had like, she was kind of, uh, you know, second to the last of the comics who came out. Yeah. And so when she came out, obviously she's a short woman and she's much shorter. So she like came out and she's like adjusting the mic for herself. And I can hear all these people around me just thinking, oh my God, she's so short. And I just like was like, I think she's a normal height. Like I was just like, cause I know she's like an inch or two taller than me. No, just like, why are everyone so shocked when someone's just below average height? Why is it this big of a deal? I'm like, she's also very funny. She's also incredibly funny. What I did when I had to uh, come out with Monroe Martin and he had the thing up with like six fucking five, I just stood on my toes and acted like it couldn't be a joke. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> and then when I left the stage, I dropped it all the way down there. So it was like three feet. And then Monroe was like this. Thank you. Rob Bennington, everybody. Let him hear it. <laughs> and that's the way I deal with adversity. Okay. <laughs> I roll with it. Uh, but Aparna is, uh, it's her world right now, huh? Yeah, it's What great. was the show? Um, so it was a, um. It was the benefit for a future that doesn't, won't suck. Yeah, it's, uh, it's for this, I, I'm not remembering Grist. the. Yeah, Grist, exactly. Grist is, uh, like an environmental organization. Uh, so they did a benefit, um, so it was, uh, Eugene Merman was there. Wow. David Cross wow. was there. Um, yeah, it was really, what a really show. fun. Brooklyn's it was Brooklyn's finest. Yeah. And then it was cool because when Aparna came up, I noticed all the comedians and they hadn't done this for anyone else came out into the audience to watch Aparna. So I always think that that's kind of like a, a cool sign when you see yeah. like all the comics, like, wait, I need to check her out. Uh, Chris, did you know that the new Blade Runner uh, trailer is out? No. Yes. I don't know where. Let's see. Is it? See if it's on the eye bank. Looking it up right now. Blade yeah. Runner twenty forty nine. Why are you sounding like an autistic kid? Just <laughs> talk like yourself. <laughs> Not on the eye bank. Not on the eye bank okay. yet. Let's see if you can follow it. Follow that. Is this it? Now, first of all, before we even look at this, are you hoping or thinking the new Blade Runner will be good? I saw one early trailer, a teaser trailer, and I got hyped for it. Because it kind of had to, it had, it's from, just from the trailer, it seemed like Ryan Gosling could pull it off. Wait, I didn't even trailer. know Ryan Gosling was in it. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is the new Blade is Runner. Is Harrison Ford in it? Harrison Ford is in it, yeah. And is this, uh, like, is it a sequel? Is it within the same world? Is it a prequel? Is it <laughs> Same world, and it's like whatever, like thirty years later, whatever year it was in the original Blade Runner. Well, we're thirty years after Blade Runner, just yeah. about right. Yeah, thirty, maybe even a little more than that. So we're trying to look it up. Is this it? This is it. Okay. Uh, dim the it's lights. Loading. Dim the lights. As dim all the lights, sweet darling. Because tonight it's all the way to Blade Runner man. <laughs> all right. Yeah, make it like big. really big, oh, like as big still, as a movie screen. I, I, yeah. I can't. I have this a is the new Blade Runner. Uh, you'll be listening to the new Blade Runner audio. <laughs> Replicants are like any other machine. They're either a benefit or a hazard. If they're a benefit, it's not my problem. Shit, skin job. You Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> it's outside the city. Really, Scott? You see pee in this thing. Oh, there's his old car. China. Blade Runner sound. Uh oh, what the fuck's in there? Blade Runners? Oh, no. A bunch of Blade Runners. The old toy factory. Oh my God. It's Frank Gosling. Mm. They hate him. I did your job this. once. I was good at it. Things were simpler then. <sighs> 
complicated. <laughs> Believe me, I was there. Listen, I love that soundtrack. Blade Runners are scary. I'm fucking going to, I, yeah. I, I, I bet you about these kind of reboots all the time, but I'm going to Blade Runner. I'm I in. was I was just about to bitch about it before we saw the trailer. I'm so glad I didn't do that on Good. the record. Well, what was your what was your I was bitch just like, oh, like, is that something that we need to mess with? Like, yes, why? Why do we need to? Well, that looks pretty good. You know, nobody I'm came in. out and saw the Blade Runner when it first. It was a flop. Really? Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. I just rewatched it like maybe last year, and I was just like, oh, "Fuck, I forgot how good this do you movie wa- is." Do you watch all the different variations? Because there's like five. No, I just watch director's like, cut. Yeah. There's uh, there's one cut that says we're going to take out every good scene. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is Check kind of interesting out. without it being <laughs> as good. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is. Harrison Ford's a blade. He's he's also a skin job. He is a, he skin is a job. robot sent out to kill robots, right? Replicant. Yeah, he's a replicant. What did you fucking base that on that you knew that he was a skin job? Oh, uh, that he ran at the end. I don't know if he ran. Why wouldn't he be done with the whole thing? Because he took her. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, he wanted her. So I don't know if that ever seemed to me that he would. Now, everyone has agreed now. Maybe that Harrison is, Ford yes. was, but at the time that we watched it, that was only like a faint thought. Like, oh, could he be? Right. But no one. There was nothing definitive. But then Chris just did what people today do and say, "Oh, a hundred percent." And then I go, "Why?" He goes, "Because he ran. He had the fucking girl with him that he enjoyed, right? Sexting with. Like, we're going to sex robots in the future, mm-hmm. in the near future. Oh, yeah." Can't so, wait. Vito, I'm going to ask you, because Chris won't def- defend his point like we had to the other day. Do you think that he's a replicant? I've never seen Blade Runner before. What the How? fuck? Oh, my God. I, it's one of those movies I've always wanted. I have to watch it, and then I just never do. Why don't you? watch you? dumb movies over and over, and you watch dumb TV shows over and I over. I know, and I need to watch Blade Runner, especially because my boy's going to be in this new one. Who's your boy? Ryan Gosling. No, don't act like you have any ownership over this or could call anybody your boy. I'm sure you haven't even seen most of Ryan Gosling things because you are, look, you got those cool new sunglasses. I give you benefit for that. Mm -hmm. But you don't (laughs) take your culture in. I have seen every Ryan Gosling movie. Uh, I'm (laughs) sure. No, you haven't. I'll start name them. I'll I'll, I'll put together a Ryan Gosling test and you will fail it. (laughs) <laughs> I might have to. Uh, it's like a quiz, <laughs> quiz of each. My people are saying, "Where can I see this?" It's up on the iBank. I want to see this trailer. So I get that everybody's saying, and it looked there, right? Like he was, but I don't know where the definitive word came out of. I think Ridley Scott also came out and said, "Yeah, but yeah, that but doesn't mean you got to prove it in the movie." That's like, like Francis Ford Coppola could say, "Oh, by the way." Sonny really didn't die in the fucking toll booth. What? You know what I mean? Like, he did in terms of the movie. Right. Or uh, like now, a... Ryan from Portland is going to pick up where Chris Stanley let his gloves drop and did not defend. Ryan is ready to defend the point that Ford was a replicant. Go ahead. I'll defend myself. Yes. yes. So the uh, Edward James almost left the org army. Yes, I remember the that. army was the... That was the indication. He always left that whenever there was a replicant. So he just left that. He said he was going to kill him, but it was like, yeah, I know who you are, and I'm just going to let you go. Yeah, but how do we not think that he didn't leave it for the chick? And by the way, he never says, I leave that origami for every replicant. You know what I mean? Like, I get get that you could lean that way, but it doesn't make it definitive, in my opinion. Right. There had to be a definitive fucking move. By the way, there's nothing – I don't – there's very few things that stress me out as much as that stupid test, right, where they Turing kept test. saying stuff. Oh, yeah. You're getting fucking crazier and crazier. There's a turtle laying on its back. You're like, what the fuck, man? I don't know. How do you feel but about how that? how do you know that – and you go through this during your teen years when you're like, how do I know anything real is real? Yeah. Great way to drive yourself insane. You know, like there's people who think that 
when they don't see people, it just kind of disappears, right? There's no way to prove anything different. Right. Them. There's no way. When you start looking for ways to disprove reality, but you isn't can that do it. also a, a thing of a you know almost like a lack of empathy? Like if you're uh, not a psychopath, but what's what is it when you don't care about other? What's the word? I'm Chris thinking? Stanley is the word. That yeah. I don't use. But when you, it's like like serial killers have this. It's like guns, the knives. They <laughs> no, have guns and knives. I know that. No, I won't really want to know what it is. It's not guns like or a knives. narcissism thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a narcissism. It's not psychopath. Sociopath. 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 Uh, Thank you. Vito's on top of it. Vito is my fucking wordsmith. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's That's a social he guy. He's a wordsmith. He's a he's production a man. He's my social half. <laughs> yeah, because he's doing the social game. All right, so what's your point? Well, the, my thing doesn't say that they don't have empathy. Right, but I'm saying I, I'm saying if if you believe, if you're the type of personality who thinks that, um, you know, almost like the world disappears when you're not in the room, isn't that also being like a sociopath? But the thing is, are you a sociopath? Let's suppose you've heard the nightmares about where phones come from, right? Mm -hmm. That it's basically slave labor. But did you ever, like, even think, like, when someone talks about love, didn't you ever think to yourself, do I love the same way that other people love? You know what I mean? Right. You, when someone says, do you, do you love her? You're like, my version of love, yeah. But is that the universal? There's no way to put your feelings against everyone else. Right, because the love, whether, even if you don't want it to, uh, it, it can be tied to selfish reasons. It's not always like it's uh, I love the way this makes me feel. So that's like reflecting back in on yourself. And and that may have also been true of Mother Teresa. You know what I mean? She had universal love, but she felt universal love. Yeah, she loved she loved so, the cred. <laughs> so, yeah. But does that make you a bad person? If let's say you do good things to be known as the person who does good things. You know what I mean? Right. It can't be it can't be all good then. Because I, there's personal gain being. But why is that wrong? You know what I mean? Why do we think that there's any personal gain in the feeling that I don't so much like doing good things, but I love to get awards that <laughs> said I did good things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd like to go, this award <laughs> proves I'm probably better than anybody I went to high school with, and I'm definitely better than anyone in my family. <laughs> I did it. I approve the nice person award for myself. It's something none of you people watching could understand. Um, Chris, Brooklyn, what's up, buddy? Buddies, how yeah. are you? So good. Um, how are you? Doing good. I was uh, getting back to the Blade Runner thing. Good. Um, I remember they did a director's cut. And there was some dream sequence with some horses. A unicorn, and, right? Yeah. I, I got to tell you the truth. Yeah. yeah. But why would having a dream sequence prove anything? I I don't know. I just remember reading that, and they say that was the reason why it proves he's a replica. I didn't think he was a replica when I read, originally saw it. Yeah. It's, it's become this defining thing now that he was a replicant. But when it came out, and I can tell you this, it was one of those movies that I saw and then went back and saw and when it, when it came straight to cable, because they used to, I don't think there wasn't a pay-per-view. You just got it on fucking cable. <coughs> and then I watched it every single time. But now I'm going to move to watch it again. Yeah. Oh, I could watch that fucking movie over and over. That's like one of the best dystopian movies I don't know why people do like dystopian movies. They do. They're great. I don't even know if we've ever had a utopian movie. If there has been a utopian one, there was a dystopia underneath it. Exactly right. Or like Sylvester Stallone. That's the only way you can have a utopia. Like someone else doesn't have it as good as us. Yeah. <laughs> right. <There's> still, <laughs> we have it good in this little bubble. There, there's still Cambodian people making the utopian <laughs> fucking stuff for you. I'm going to just guess Cambodian. I don't work. I don't really know where stuff comes from. <clears throat> well, but I would like to thank them with this award that I got for being a good person. <laughs> this, the good person award, is probably long overdue, but it's here. 
We've been nominated so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dish. What was your favorite dish, everyone? <laughs> Chris Rock. I'm going to say spade because I didn't know who that girl was. <laughs> Well, wait, there'll be another spade hot chick story tomorrow. <laughs> Ladies love David Spade. Hey, Tim, what's up, buddy? So, so is this just, am I supposed to take this as gospel now? He was a replicant or because I've seen it a few times. I'm not buying it. And how, how did he get his ass kicked so bad by Rutger Hauer? I and guess he was, Mackle yeah, was that's a very good hot. point. Holy he God. did not have superhuman strength. They, and they they didn't go out of their way to explain that. I think it was the next level replicant where he didn't have. He, also, he didn't have like a time. Uh, he like they, he could just live live his life and age, as opposed to the other replicants who had a time limit on their on their yeah. bodies. Yeah, but we so weren't he, giving yeah. that thing. You're just saying that now. Yeah, but we weren't given that expl explanation at all. We were kind of, we heard that she was next level, but why had he been doing that for so many years? Or was that not even real? Did he not even do any of that stuff? You can't say there's a definitive answer yeah. to this. Uh, by the way, the GPS uh, Ireland was, uh, everybody was loving it in a big, big way. And we've got replays of that, right? Yeah, so that's replaying uh, Wednesday, May 10th at 4 p.m. Uh, on Deep Tracks Channel 27. It's also on demand, so you can uh, check it out there. Um, this is the super tweet. Yes, for... this is a super tweet from the Maria Bamford Unmasked, which we played on Friday. And the winner of the signed poster, the Maria Bamford Unmasked signed poster. Fantastic. Very cool. Uh, that goes to J Saint fifty three, J Saint fifty three. You'll be uh, getting that. Why don't we uh, break right back? This is the Bennington Show. Vito's got new sunglasses <laughs> on the Bennington Show. He's one of the guys now. Do you know I haven't seen the Saturday Night Live? I was so busy, and then. You know, my Sunday is very fucking busy. And then I have 95 shows that I got to keep up with on a, on a Sunday night. So was it a good SNL or a bad? I thought it was a very good uh, SNL. One to ten. Uh, I would put it in the seven point. I would put it in the eight. Seven point five to eight. Eight is great. Yeah. It's a, it's a solid B. Low A. Chris, what would you give it? Did not see it. See, you like me. You did a lot of sleeping, though, you told me. I uh, did nothing but sleep and catch up on TV shows. Well, here's one that I, you missed. I, I know. It seems like you did. Uh, too many. Vito. I saw a good amount of the sketches. I'd give it like seven and a half. Mm, I kind of feel like to really give out your straight Yelp vote, you shouldn't say it off. And I do want to say that uh, I did factor in musical guests and LCD sound system did play. So that Killed did it. factor in to my Vote. Did they do well? They did so well. Um, played two new songs, which I already heard because I saw them live. Um, <laughs> They're new. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the the friend date that you and Tom Sharpling. Yes. Had. Also, I should say that Tom Sharpling, one of the 50 funniest people yes! in the world. Tom Sharpling and John Worcester together get put on the 50, Rolling Stones, 50 funniest people working today. I was very happy to see it was that. Very, very exciting. He uh, deserves it. He does. Um, and he's going to be on the premiere of our uh, big show, Perfect Song, which we recorded a long time ago. And mm -hmm. Chris, you still haven't heard back? Um, if they're listening to it, is what I was told, but everything looks good. Social game. Video, I need you to be on this. Walk down the hall, say, Look, we've got Sharpling on the top 50 funniest people. And uh, I'm going to say America, but I'm going to go to North America. Mm -hmm. I'm going to include the Mexicans and the Canadians in this. I don't know the shit they do down in South America. <laughs> they might be funny as fuck, right? Or they might not have even invented. But I need the social game. I got to get out of the email game. I'm going to storm into the volley, Mary, later. Storming doesn't seem social. A good storm. A fun storm. Okay, like, are you saying like a jazz quiet storm? Is yeah. that what you're going to bring in? <laughs> the quiet storm. I'm like, that fucking sounds good. I want to hear the quiet storm. <laughs> it's a non-offensive saxophone. 
but yeah, that's a great. Uh, that's great for Sharply. It's very cool. It's yeah. uh, quite an honor. I, I hope I'm sure he's hope he lets it sink in. No, no, no. <laughs> Sharply already feels bad and slighted by this. Yeah. Uh, I I uh, texted him a congratulations, which like had sort of like a grumpy kind of like you know whatever. I'm like, oh, stop it! It's so cool. Yeah. Well, that's the way I feel every time I get a raise. <laughs> Go like, that's it? Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you know, I think you're better to feel like life sucks the soul out of you. Because then at least you've, ha- you've got a soul. Yeah. You know? And then also, you know, you hang on to those things. They could break you, too. You get, you get addicted to getting that credit. I know. Oh, Being true. in the sun. I would say this, though. Um... 38 Special taught me very something very, very important, and that's to hang on loosely. Mm-hmm. But don't let go. No, no, don't let go. But you do uh, hang like, on loosely. Just with the fingertips, I think. Yeah. I tried to, uh, I was watching a movie because I couldn't sleep last night, um, and it was like one of those uh, gorgeous Australian brothers. It's either Thor or one of be Thor's. Right, there's like nine of those brothers. Yeah. Hemsworth, Hemsworth, yeah. Uh One of them was a a Boston whaler back in the 1800s, and it was the. I'm laying there going like this. I don't believe that's a dolphin. I don't believe that's a shark. I don't believe that that's a whale, and I don't believe that you're out to sea. <laughs> it's almost like you took a very attractive Hemsworth and put him in the middle of a cartoon. <laughs> That's what CGI has done to us. By the way, in SNL, that's like kind of the opening bit, which is exactly what I was saying was I can't tell the difference between any of those those Chris's. I didn't I can't tell the difference between a Helmsworth, a Pine, a Pratt. And then I found out one existed that I didn't know. Evans. That's somebody. I didn't know that was a person. Chris Evans. I just thought that was one guy. He was the one who did uh, Hell or High Water, though, right? No, that's. Pine. Pine. Yeah. Right, who's Chris Evans? Evans is Captain America. Yeah. And th- that isn't the same guy? No, that's a different guy. Chris Evans dated uh I don't dated who Jenny dates Slate. Who. No. And we well, want to know all, about the congratulations to anybody who dates Jenny Slate. There's something about her. Uh I mean Funny the only one I could hat. really tell is Pratt. Like I understand who Pratt is. I know Chris Pratt hundred percent. I don't confuse him with anybody cause... But like the the Pine Evans. Evans and Helmsworth. I don't know what's going on. And they, that was their whole opening bit is no one can tell who he is. Now, the Galaxy uh, 2, m- even more Galaxy, made $158 million, which, which means nothing compared to what it's going to make in China. China is what we're hoping to see now. But our friend Leslie, not a fan of Galaxy 2, even more Galaxy. And she was a fan of the first one, correct? I don't know. That part I don't know. I'd be interested to know because I know a lot of people really loved that first one. Yeah. And then people were telling me, no, 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 you've got to see it. Like, even if you don't Did like you say it, it. Nope. It's not It's not really my thing. Well, you might like one thing. A lot of 70s pop music they play. Okay. Interested um, in that. But I know what is your thing? Uh, just like a big action kind of thing. It just doesn't seem like I would dig it. I'm not, like, totally against it. There was uh, an article debating the fact of whether Chris Pratt was even an actual movie star, because I think the point was, you could put anyone in these movies, right? And People go to see franchises, not movie stars. So, I don't know how many actual movie stars. Like, the Helmsworth... They're going to be, they're going to have people show up when they're superheroes, but when they're not superheroes, like, I don't know if anyone, I doubt if anyone showed up to that whale movie that I was talking about. Right. I don't know whether we, we have movie stars. I think movies may be that dead that we just have franchise stars. Like you take all the Spider-Mans. We're on our third Spider-Man now since the year 2000. I can't believe that. Um, which also means that the the big superhero genre is almost two decades old. Yeah. You know? 
and, and I don't mean like, oh, you can go back before that. I mean just saying this is the definitive kind of movie. This Right. And people people show up. They're not like, oh, man, that's not my Spider-Man. I'm not going to go see it because it doesn't have my care. Spider-Man. The They're suit, just like, I'll see a Spider-Man. The suit is in it. And in this preview that I saw, he said that Tony Stark invented the suit for him. So yeah. it's not even like he's done his own suit. He immediately has Iron Man hmm. designing his suit, which is, you know, for people act like, oh, this the comic book is the true. They don't even give a fuck. They make it their own shit up. They get yeah. more Iron Man. That's what they like. Oh, oh, Iron Man reference. This is awesome. Oh, he shows up in the movie for fucking two minutes. Well, I don't think Iron Man's getting his own movies anymore. I think he's just going to be like a main character in these type of movies now. Smart. And not even a man, he's a character actor. He's a supporting role. So he, cause I think they gotta pay him full freight if he yeah. goes out there. And they, it, it's, it's got to the point where if he does Iron Man, uh, Iron Man, he goes, he wants seven billion dollars. But you know how many Chinese that's like asking for 50 cents from every Chinaman? <laughs> they got it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say Chinaman. That's all this. China person. Every fucking China person could give you 50 cents. And you'd have seven billion dollars. <laughs> and now they want to make um, Doctor Strange, Cumberbatch, the new Iron Man type. So they signed on for like ten movies. Good, good for insane. It. And that's the one that I thought was Doctor Who. Yeah, yes. that was the guy yes. who thought Doctor Who. Um, Doctor Who is what I call him. It's like this Doctor Who movie doing Dan, pretty well. <laughs> from the old Steely Dan movies. Uh, but. You know, people are like, how long could this thing last? But, you know, the Western was around for three or four decades. The, I think the oddest of all movie genres was the gladiator movies that ran right. throughout the fifties. Mm -hmm. Now we found out that they were for, you know, gay guys, they say. Yeah. At the time, I don't think that was known. Yeah. The, it wasn't very clear that all the like drapery and gold bikini type things were. And, <laughs> and horror has been around. Forever. Yeah. And we go through horror phases. There's times where horror is more popular. But never not done. Right. Never it always not exists. done. There's always horror. Every year. Like, what would you say is, like, the the heyday of horror? Like, when was horror the most popular? Uh, well, there's a couple because you had the old school Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman horror. Mm -hmm. Right? And then in the 70s became slasher horror. I don't think that kind of... Or really existed. Well, you know, it all goes back to Psycho. Yeah. Which was what, late 50s, early 60s. So I think the heyday of horror would be the kind of horror people don't watch anymore. The Wolfman. <laughs> right. The mummy. <laughs> right. The, you know what I mean? Like, there is something so classic about that that it's almost hysterical. And then that, like, the horror, like, run went on. What would that be like? early aughts where i don't know when everything was like the ring and then like that just like kept going and everything stopped. like yeah that, that's just continued on yeah well what that is and it's a very brilliant thing is you make something for nothing and if it hits yeah you can make you know hundreds of millions of dollars if it misses you lose out on eighty thousand. and then what was the start of that you think the blair witch kind of like jumped that off i would where, say blair witch yeah, yeah. even they, like, though they didn't follow it up properly the way the other ones did but everyone learned from blair witch yeah but blair witch was really i mean if you go back to halloween it's the same story as blair witch we made this for no money no one saw it coming kids went out because the beauty of it is you have an audience that is 15 years old right so they have no sense of history. They don't know if you're right. ripping something off. Right. You know what I mean? It's the like, first time they've seen if it. If you really think about it, the Scream movie, which I thought was brilliant. So good. Made fun of the fact that there was already this thing of kids liking horror movies. And Scream now is 20-some years old. Yeah. Right? So that's why you can reteach. I mean, you've got an audience who has zero idea where this is coming from right. every single time. So every three years, there's a new high school crowd <laughs> that you can make them go, holy shit, I didn't think that, that fucking foot was going to come out of the <laughs> and grab the girl. Horror movies get older, they stay the same age. That's right. That's exactly right. When you're like, you feel smart because you're like, I would never open that door. 
She's <laughs> stupid for running upstairs. That's trapping her in the house. You always feel like a fucking genius. Her slutty behavior did this to her. Yes. First we got a little sex, and then she gets what she deserves. Burned at the stake. <laughs> I told you, big tits, don't do that. Big tits, what are you, crazy? <laughs> now, this is why I think that the 15-year-old age is too old to get them. I'm looking at four to eight, and that's why Kid Killer, the movie that I have, that small children get killed. There's a ball pit being killed. There's being killed on the potty, mm -hmm. okay? God. Uh Obviously, you're going to have a stroller murder. Uh, you know, let the little kids yeah. worry a little bit at night. And who's killing them? Is it the babysitter? The creepy babysitter that your mom left you with? Or is it another kid? Maybe that kid's a dead kid. That's a demographic that no one's going after. No one's going after, and weekend dad needs to fucking sit there with, you know? <laughs> I think it's going to be fantastic. I know it is. I know it is. First grade will never be the same as what I'm hoping to say. <laughs> Vito, you don't even watch our films because you get so scared, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like them. I think they're really scary, and I think they're cheap. Cheap in what way? I think they're like <laughs> production costs. Well, production costs. I think it's just really easy to put in a jump cut and go, "Oh, that was scary," because it, it'll just fucking jump out at you, and it, it's just shocking. And I it, do get scared when things jump out at me. Oh, I hate it. And But I, I won't even watch the good ones from the 70s because those ones actually will scare me. I want to do a thing when, in, in Kid Killer. little kid is playing with a jack-in-the-box, and boom, when it comes out, the fucking clown has a big knife. It just goes right <laughs> in the kid. Jesus, <laughs> no. It's graphic. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, razor blade in the bob. I want everything to <laughs> be perfect. <clears throat> Kid killer coming now, soon. Now, Vito, when you watch a, if there's a scary part in a movie, are you the type to close your eyes? Like, you know, he does it in here sometimes. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, if it's a lot of blood, I don't like a lot of blood and gore. Uh, but I, I am the one. If like there's a jump, I will scream yeah. very loud and move. Would you've seen if you go to like if you if Gail like play fights with me, <laughs> I'd flinch. What is the? All right, let's just play this game. The loudest scream you've ever seen in a movie. And I'm going to say, I'm going to age myself easily here. The loudest was the first big summer movie for the world. And I was there. And that was the movie Jaws. There were two screams. One where the chum and the Jaws face came up. But the other one, and I don't know whether this has been forgotten about, is when the fisherman's face Pops into oh yeah the thing Ben Garner's the, boat the entire place screamed and then talked for like a full minute or two right. I was going crazy like I don't even know what's happening now <laughs> because they the the people would not stop with it so I want you to think to yourself largest scream I've ever heard in a movie eight four four rock god eight four four rock god. Gail, I'm going to go to you first. It looks like you got your answer by the confident look I see yes. in your jaw. You okay. have a confident jaw mm -hmm. right Yep. Now. I've uh, pronounced. Uh, so the loudest scream I can remember in a movie theater experience, not a great film, but a little film called I Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh, yeah. I was like in middle school. And the very end of the movie, very much stereotypical kind of jump, cut, mm -hmm. loud meh, kind of sound. Yeah. But it was kind of after all the drama. I believe it's maybe even the very last moment. And everyone was so taken aback and so off guard that there were like full shrieks in the theater mm -hmm. where it was just like full on scream. All right, so say the movie and the scene again. The scene is, I know what you did last summer. The final scene, I believe, jumping out of a, a shower or just after she gets out of the shower. And the entire audience shrieked, like high-pitched shriek. Now, uh, I know what you did last summer was another, you know, uh, by the numbers, but it worked perfectly 
Mm-hmm. For what they had young stars who were so happy to be starring. You know, right. I mean, careful of you. You know that they didn't charge a lot of money. Uh, they were all attractive. The simplicity of that plot was ridiculous, crazy, and yet <laughs> the um, the raincoat thing. Because a lot of people would have that same raincoat. Oh, so you thought you were following that guy? I think that's always great. With like a villain is like something that could be repeated, like just very simple. Yeah, like that where you're going to have that association for life, but. I know what you did last summer was like a teen novel first that I had read. So that's why I was so a excited. YA. Yes, a YA horror that I, I had read. The first I know about that. And that's why I was excited. I like I wasn't really the horror movie type, but I had already read the book, so I was very excited mm-hmm. uh to see it. But yeah, it's totally simple. Uh not good, but I just remember just full on an audience full of like teenage girls as shrill as they could just full on scream. Um, and I don't remember what happened. What did that fisherman, was he a ghost fisherman? No. So he was just a he, mean man. He, uh, by car, he got hit by their car. So it was a hit and run now, did scenario it last summer. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And he knows he remembers. He knows yeah. what they did. Okay. Um, and he, he, it was a hit and run. They dumped the body cause they had been drinking. They were scared. There's some, some arguments on what they should be doing about it. And then they dumped the body, but it turns out he wasn't dead and he's coming after them. And so the whole movie, he's kind of <laughs> fucking with them, leaving them little <sighs> clues. Jennifer Love Hewitt's out there like, like, what are you waiting for, huh? Yeah, what are you great. waiting for? She just ran and yelled at the... <laughs> She's just ready to brain. die. <laughs> See, this is what I would have recommended to him. They're rich kids, right? Sue them. <laughs> Sue them and their insurance company. At least he got the plate number. Uh, Orman. Orman, what's up? Hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. So back in high school, I went to see Seven in the theaters and uh, took a date there, and it was... At the dollar movies, so I'm, I'm setting a stage here. There was a bit of an urban yeah. audience, if you will, and a ton of kids for some reason. Like, like they all. Oh yeah, I mean them. that's a perfect movie for kids. You no know? shit. So yeah. we're sitting there, and you get to the scene where the guy's been strapped down to the bed for a year with all mm-hmm. the Christmas trees. I know exactly oh, what you mean. Yes. Yes. I remember. Holy shit! Yeah, when he wakes up. The whole place just erupted. I mean, I well, rem- that, well just- here's what they did so smart with that. The tension was unbelievable throughout the movie. So when you get that scene, you know what I mean? You have a lot of build-up yeah. anxiety. And that movie was shot so well. Now, you could make the case that that movie was a thriller, same as now that I understand what I did last summer, was just a man chasing them. Right. Those are really thrillers. Not technically horror, that horror needs something that is supernatural. Supernatural. Or... And yet I would I have no problem putting either one of these. Yeah. In the horror section. But when he just mentioned that that like the sloth like what happened that yes. sloth. Yeah. I had a physical memory of like the way it made me feel. Like it's so fucking scary, dude. What's in the box? <laughs> um Stephen, Stephen in Houston. Yeah. Stephen, we got you? Looks like we lost you. Uh, Hello? Oh, there you are, Stephen. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was we're about, I guess, 16 or 17 in high school, and we went to see the movie Signs. Yeah. And my buddy, it was three of us, and my buddy, when the scene when Mel Gibson has got the knife, and he's looking under the the pantry door. <laughs> oh yeah. And that hand and that hand comes out. Yeah. He screamed bloody murder. He was sitting in the middle of, and I, we have not let him have it since. We've been letting him have it ever since. Swing away. <laughs> Swing away. Uh, David Oakland, scariest scene that you've ever heard the audience react to. Yeah, the reaction on TV was Serenity at the end of Nightmare on Elm Street. They had the nice music on. Yeah, it looks like it's over and. When they grabbed that girl and pulled her through the door, people freaked the fuck out. That was a weird, the way they grabbed her, it just tore her through the door. It was horrifying. Yeah, I think a lot of, like, what was, was Halloween the original hand is coming out of the... The dirt or the something, dirt, yeah. The dirt, the grave. I think it was Carrie. 
the original the first time that happened. Is that yeah. right? Because okay, oh, you yeah, might yeah, be yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Good the call. end of Carrie, right? So that was a long time ago. And that was, we thought the movie was over, ba ba ba, everything is good. And then you grab her from the grave, showing that her dreams are going to be right. nightmarish forever, which uh. scares the fuck out of kids. Mm-hmm. Because you're already, you know, falling to sleep and death are probably not that dissimilar. You yeah. Know? And like, I know when I was a kid, it was just like, it was a place where anything could happen. And you're just like a prisoner of your own mind. Yes. <laughs> you're like, if you can think it up, and I could. Right. It would happen. Uh, by the way, signs, please go back for that to see <laughs> um, who plays the... Wise ass greaser. <laughs> it's not Michael Ian Black, but it's Michael Showalter. Please watch it. <laughs> Please, just for that part. Uh, John, South Carolina. Good afternoon, Bennington's and crew. Hey, buddy. Uh, the movie, the movie that I uh, got scared at the most as a kid was a movie called Zen, and it's when they were the army was in the sewers looking for these giant ants, and they just break out and start grabbing. You know, all the soldiers and everything, right. and they're fighting these giant now, ants. You saw it in the theater, right? Yes, I did. And the theater screamed at that point? Oh, yeah. It yeah. is amazing experience when a theater screams. Because let's remember, this is a two-dimensional thing that you're watching. Yeah. We all realize that this was shot a summer before. We know who the actors are. We know. And yet we scream. As a group of people. And then there's normally a laugh right after that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, isn't that funny? Uh. He screamed out loud. (laughs) But that scream is as real as if somebody was actually coming after you. Avery, what do you got? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, The Conjuring, when that came out uh, a couple years back, the original one, I went and saw it in the theaters. It was a midnight showing, so... uh, when the scene uh, happened with that lady on top of the wardrobe, that demon thing. Yeah, I never saw it. Uh, when when she popped out, it scared the shit out of the entire theater. Everyone was screaming, and it was kind of the same thing like uh, with Jaws you were talking about, where everyone started talking about it then. So that was pissing me the hell off. But then after the movie was over, when everyone was leaving, there was a person that I'm guessing had already seen the movie before outside dressed as that demon chasing everybody around to their cars. It is real. This just reminded me of uh, of a thing with um, when poltergeist, right? I had taken Gail's mom, two sisters, and a brother to see poltergeist. So they were all sitting there, and I was still, you know, attempting to impress the other family. So we're watching it, and it's scary. And then I say to Gail's mom, I go, I'm going to go get the kids some popcorn. So I get up, and suddenly the whole, that this whole row got up and started to pull me out. I go, where are you guys going? Watch the movie. I'll get it. And they said, she said that you were afraid and wanted to leave. <laughs> I go, what the fuck? <laughs> Why would I be afraid of poltergeist? <laughs> oh, sweet. that they're like, all right, well, if he's really yeah. scared, let's go. If he's that scared, we better all go. Still bothers me to this day. <laughs> I won't let myself watch. And then if Poltergeist comes on, they start laughing. And like as be, though it's true. Yeah, like like this is the movie that Ron was scared of. <laughs> and you know that's not true, Chris. You know I'll, know. I'll stand right up the fucking Poltergeist. Some interdimensional demon. Fuck him. Um, Hey, Bill. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie P. How's everything going, buddy? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, Ronnie B, going back in time, the early 80s and the very first Friday 13th, when they're just out of the lake at the very end of the movie, and that fucking comes up out of the water, that scared the shit out of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, you know, like you said, the Friday the 13th uh, films, I don't know how kids went back to summer camp after that. You know what I mean? No. I mean, these are almost anti-Semitic fucking movies. What do you think about <laughs> It's killing kids at camp. It had to hurt the industry. No, because their parents will send them away. They hate their no ma- I mean, if there was actually murderers up there, the Jews would still send their families. 
Because their kids cry, and they're going to go, you're going to like it someday. Yeah. And I go, oh, did you like it when you went to camp? No. I used to cry, too. <laughs> I go, but, you know, they need that. I go, you, you only got a couple summers with your kids before they're just grown up. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Michael, Denver. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. So the, the scene that sticks out the most is uh, in It. When uh, the girl's in the bathroom and that blood bubble starts to form in the sink, yeah. and you know what's going to happen, but the moment that it pops is the moment everybody loses it. I I it never just, saw that in the theater, but I saw it at home, and like everything about that movie, like there are so many. Did you love it? Jump scares. It was a TV movie. I don't think it was yeah. in the theaters. Yeah. No, it was yeah, it was a TV movie. But like I had, I went to Blockbuster, got like the two tape situation because it was like yeah. super long. <laughs> And actually, really embarrassing. Me and my brother, we both wanted to see this so bad, and we were all excited about it. We put in the tape. We're watching the whole thing. It's coming to the end of the end of the tape, and we're like, "Man, there's a real feel of finality there." I mean, it just uh, where do they even go from here? Yeah. We put in the other tape, and we had put in tape two first. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to watch it like a prequel. And like to be honest, really, tape one is even better. That's when the kids are yeah. little. And we're yeah. like, God damn it, we messed this whole thing up. But the best is me and my little brother going, I don't know where they're gonna go from here. It seems like everything's kinda tied up in a bow. Well, we'll have to see. Let's put on tape two. Um <laughs> Here's our buddy Pit Talk. Pit Talk. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, buddy. My scary scene is uh, the first, the original Dawn of the Dead. At the beginning of the show, the uh, movie, the uh, the National Guard is clearing out this apartment building, and this woman runs up and says, you know, there's a zombie there, they want to shoot it, and the woman says, no, it's my husband, and she runs up, and she hugs the zombie, and the zombie looks back, takes a look at her, and then t- takes a whole bite out of her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, that movie was made for, like, next to nothing, and I think you could still probably see that in the theater. You know, yeah. somewhere. But yeah. that's always the beauty of the horror movie. And while there will always be a way, A, because it's like the young filmmaker, it's their easiest thing to make in terms of budget and creativity. You know right. what I mean? Like, you don't have to be complex to scare the fuck out of someone. No. You know? There will always be a place. For these horror. But we were talking about films that you saw in a theater where the entire theater screamed. Kurt, Michigan. Hey, you're on a beast. Hey. Yeah, uh, Jurassic Park, where they're turning all the electricity back on, and she leans up against the cables or whatever. She's like, I think we're back in business. And that dinosaur jumps through <laughs> oh, the shit. whole place screaming. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether we'll ever have anything that fucking blew people away the way Jurassic Park did when it came out. No. I, I, As a little kid watching that in the theater, and I'm just like, well, this is real. Like, there's no way this isn't real. I was this an adult is watching it in the theater thinking it was also real. <laughs> and then people immediately thought it could happen. <laughs> like, maybe this was all just a cover. Like, they were just going to unveil the actual Jurassic Park. We found Amber. <laughs> TJ, Colorado. A uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After the movie was over, there were several screams in the movie, but after it was over with, everybody's letting out. It's in the middle of the day. The grounds crew is out there. Somebody starts up a weed eater. It's a mob mentality. The first one screams. Everybody bolted to the parking lot. It was amazing. I saw uh, that movie in a drive-in, uh, so I didn't get the mass screams. But when people would always see scenes that they liked, they would start beeping their horns. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, John, Tampa. Hey, hey, Bennington. Hey. Oh, that's funny as hell. Um, this one might be isolated to me. My dad was pretty progressive, and he took me at six years old to see Barbarella with the beautiful Jane Fonda. And Duran Duran, where the band Duran Duran got its name from. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. That's yes. from that movie? There was a beautiful male model guy, and his name was Duran Duran. <laughs> and it was spelled Duran Duran. And uh, Chris is looking it up right now. 
Um, well, there's this one fucking scene in that movie where there's this cave with these little dolls with steel teeth. Yeah. And they're coming at Jane Fonda, and they start biting her, and she's bleeding. And it freaked me the fuck out so much. I stiffened up my dad. had to carry me out of the theater. That And literally 20 years later, I rented the movie from Blockbuster, and it still gave me the heebie-jeebies. So. Um, I never... <laughs> Made it that far in the movie. I'd always come long before then. Um, <laughs> Jack, Jack, what's up? Hey, how are you, Ron? Hey, Love yes, you it's fine, but we're, we moved on. But the first one you had, you had to understand that wasn't a beautiful man, right? Yes. Uh, Jack in Illinois. Hey, we were at Silence of the Lambs, and you remember when you're going to get, I forget the killer's name, but Precious, you know, in a, in yeah. a pit? And Calumet City is where they go to ring the buzzer, and we were actually at the theater in Calumet City, and the place just lost its mind oh, when it Jesus showed that on the screen. Christ, that's <laughs> that great. The weirdest shit I ever had happen. That, that was, I will put that uh, like seven, where they leave you so stressful for so long. Yeah. That when it finally comes up to like the showdown, you feel like your nose is going to start bleeding. <laughs> your right. blood pressure has just been wrecked. And that's what you don't get by killing people constantly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you kind of numb up to it. But when you keep pulling that rubber band, you know what I mean? It's like we know it's going to break, but when? Yeah, that, I mean, the final scenes of that movie is just like crazy tension. Crazy tension. Like stomach ache over it. Oh, yeah, leading up in the, the in the car when they're driving up out there even. Oh, yeah. It's um, fucked. And then you think that they're breaking in that thing and that she, you know, and you say, oh, my God, all those guys are at the wrong house. And then you oh. see her oh, all so by herself, tiny as she is. And him saying, is she a great big fat person? <laughs> <laughs> um, we got into this conversation of... Knowing that uh, a an explosion of screams in a movie theater. Frank, crazy point. Early 80s, I was a student at Fordham University up in the Bronx, and my roommates and I decided to go up to the Valentine Theater on Fordham Road to go see a little movie called American Werewolf from London. Uh, we were the only three white people in the theater, and it was packed. And the double nightmare scene came up. I have never seen that type of reaction in people ever since. The place exploded out of their seats. Yeah, I forgot about American Werewolf in London. That was when we were just learning that instead of CGI, they would have... The, I forget what the makeup guy's name was. He became very, very famous. But when the arms started to break and it would turn into that, yeah. we were just like, I don't know how that could happen. And it wasn't with CGI. And then uh, Michael Jackson immediately stole all those things for the thriller. Video. Now, was it like a like an animatronic thing or what? Yeah, yeah. like your arm is really underneath, and they got yeah. the fake arm. And... So they're building all Rick Baker. Yes, the great Rick Baker, who's like the makeup guy of all time. Um, let's go to um, Frankie. Frankie, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie P. Yeah. Uh, take this girl on my first date to see the first Poltergeist. And this, the scene comes up where he looks under the bed to look for the clown that's mysteriously disappeared from the room, and he sighs. It's, it's over. Then he sits back up, and the fucking thing's behind him. The whole place shit itself. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it was an old-school theater with, with the balcony, and there was popcorn falling off the balcony. I mean, the place went bonkers, man. It was awesome. Poltergeist was brilliant because it was the first time that the scary house was your house. This was a nice suburban house. It yeah. wasn't a nice family who went into a scary hotel or anything. It looked like your house, and you forget, you know, when you're watching that, you're like, oh, yeah, the big tree outside my window used to scare the fuck out of me. Right. Or my own toys would give off a weird shadow, you know. The fact that your own house could scare you as a kid is what pure terror is. And it's exactly the opposite of that stereotypical, like, oh, why would you do this thing? Like, they aren't making terrible decisions. They're just, like, living their life. And even the way, like, she kind of embraces the supernatural yeah. was such a strange choice. 
Like, what? just to have her embrace it and be like, yeah, I'm interested in this thing. Like, she's not immediately well, terrified. Because she was like, she grew up in the 60s. So right. she had done acid. She had, right. you know, probably played with the Ouija board. She thought of it. It's just like, you know, if you were, what Spielberg did, right, with his different things was, we're not afraid of UFOs. You know what I mean? Because it was the 60s people growing up, and they were open to things. So she was open to something that became dark, and that was a brilliant thing for you to pick up on um, because that was a real change yeah. in, in attitude of your lead uh, characters. Um, I'm going to show you guys a picture in a couple minutes. You're not going to believe. Um Matt in Houston. Matt, what's up? Hey, Ron. Um, the one I got is Paranormal Activity 2, where the, the girl's making the cup of coffee in the kitchen, and it's just quiet for like a minute, and then all of a sudden all the cabinet doors just explode. Now, the whole theater just pissed themselves. This is uh, smart because this is stuff that was shot on really cheap things, saying yeah. these, are, these cameras don't need to be this is what do they call it captured or cctv like closed captured television yeah like closer closed circuit tv but what i'm saying is that thing became that like oh after the fact we found this and we're putting this story together right for you and that's why it can feel real and blair witch did it first and now everybody does it and it's Kind of fucking genius. And that movie is the same thing as as opposed to having a ton of big effects. There's very small movements that happen throughout yeah. that movie. Like I, that's like a movie I was like, I don't want to see this. I don't want. Everyone was like, oh, you got to see it. I watched it and couldn't believe how terrifying. Just like the the sheet would flutter and you'd be like, fuck. <laughs> there's no, yeah. you know what I mean. Like right. there's no big special effects. You don't see anything. Uh, Pat, what's up? Uh, watch What Lies Beneath with uh, Harris Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. And the moment where she's looking across the street with the binoculars and he looks right into your eyes. I remember jumping like crazy and screaming and very much embarrassing myself. Uh, and that was a v- not a well done movie. It was very dull most of the time. <laughs> and then you get to that one scene. Because <laughs> uh, and there was also like anything that somebody's under the water, you know. Yeah. Uh, fuck that. <laughs> fuck, I can't stand when someone's face is under the water looking up. Ugh. Or that fucking what was that movie where it ends with a girl ice skating? And underneath, to die for. It, yeah, underneath was Nicole Kidman, who we, we had followed the whole movie. Yeah. I don't even like that kind of shit at all. Like, even since I was a little kid, I was like, can we get the body back to the family? <laughs> you, can you just murder him and leave him here so the family can have the body? I need closure. Yes. I need to wrap this up. All right. I got some exciting news for you guys. And it is... Something, Chris, Vito, and Jen. All of you are an embarrassment to me right now because you're not standing up to what this show has gone. So the greatest intern of all time was who, Chris? Draft House Kid. Vito, who? Connor. Gail, who? Uh, Sweet Boy? The greatest of all time was Molly. And proving it even more, look at this picture. Now, I should have wrote something nice with this, but I didn't. There is Molly clasping at her friends while she finishes the marathon oh. in Providence. Holy shit. Wow. Chris, I want you in the New York Marathon this year. I, don't, I can try. Are you telling me that Molly can run for, further than you? I, I, that I, an intern <laughs> can run farther than Come you? I'm on. much older than she is, Ron. I'll Not give... really. Just in drunk years. I'm broken down. <laughs> I think I got one more race left in me. <laughs> wow. One, one more race? You don't have any races. <laughs> Zero races under your belt right now. So I think I have one in me. <laughs> I think the only race that you have left in you is racist. <laughs> I'm not a racist. Congratulations, Molly, for making me look like shit. 
And look how energetic and excited she looks there. She looks great. I'm sweaty or sick in this corner that she is running a marathon. I'd love to see you in that kind of shape, Chris. Me too. Turn this whole thing around. Nobody's going to be saying they're worried yeah, are about you. Are you getting hold of Molly right now? If they're calling, yes. Where is she? I'm looking at the fucking phones and the phones aren't calling. Vito, are you calling Molly right now? Uh, yes. I'm just looking through my phone to get her number. Before that, did you know to call her? No. So he just made up when he said they're calling her right now. Yes, I did. That's okay. him. That's no, him. I like that. But it was his way of saying call her. It's yeah, like, they're really calling really her I'm right now. Chris, <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm incredibly proud of that. <laughs> that's fucking great. <laughs> but they didn't have the number? I thought they did. They do not. Now they have it. Good. Everyone's got everyone's number. Everyone? Everyone's got everyone's number. I'm not a number. Oh, God, now they're saying Obama told Trump, don't hire Flynn. (laughs) There's a thing now, too, some golf magazine said that years ago, oh, I already think I told this, right, on the air, that Eric Trump said, no, we don't need the U.S. banks. The Russians give us all the money we need for our golf (laughs) kids. Look it up. What the fuck? And then Eric said, how can I remember what I said to some golf guy fucking years ago? That's crazy talk. But they will never show their records. No, they this refuse. is why he won't show his tax stuff. It's smart, really. They can't get those things out there. It's smart because his fans don't care. You're like, the Trump, you could have a picture of fucking Trump taking a big bag of fucking cash from the Russians. The and line. his fans would not give a shit. They're good that way. They're like the Patriots fans. Are with Belichick. As long as he gets it done. There was a lady from Baltimore at the stand the other night. And I was like, you guys cheered in the Super Bowl for a murder. And then she was like, yeah, we did. You know what I mean? Because she was like, we got to win. And he did a nice dance. So let me point this out. All of you are shit. And somebody better be able to run a marathon for me the way Molly did. By the way, if I knew that she was doing this, I would have drove up to Long Island or wherever it was so that I could have got my picture, like, giving her a picture. I know. That could be that you. Friend of hers with a nice. That could be I wonder you. what that sign said, too. Probably 36, Molly 316, I'm guessing. But that just looks like Molly when she's laughing, like 26 miles into that. It's 26 miles? How do you not know how long a marathon is? I, you, ah, how far did you think it was? I don't know. Yards? It was like a 5K or something. Well, that's why they don't call it a 5K. It's a marathon. <laughs> All right, we got Molly on the phone right now. This is very exciting. Um, Molly, we did it. We finally, between the two of us, ran a marathon. Way to go, Molly! Thank you guys. Yeah. Couldn't have done it without you. I didn't even know that you were training for this. Um, What day did you run? I ran yesterday. All right, on Sunday, Saturday, she writes to me, what, you're in Ireland now? And I'm like, what are you talking about? But she got confused with the Irish GPS. She didn't say, I'm even running a marathon tomorrow. <laughs> now, how do you build up to run the 26 miles? Um, It's a pretty long training schedule. I, I started in December because I thought that I was running one in March. And then yeah. my sister was supposed to run it with me. She wanted to do the one in May, and then she dropped out. But I still ran it in May, so I trained a little bit longer than most people do. But they, they start you easy. You know, they do – you run, like, three days during the week, and then you do long runs on Sunday. And, uh, you know, it starts off, like, six miles is the longest, and then you work your way up. And then, you know the, – the Work your way up should be six day, miles. Or... <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> you honestly thought your sister, slacker, partier that she is, <laughs> was going to be able to do this. <laughs> Yeah, she, you know, not only that, but so, yeah, we were supposed to do a different marathon, and then we switched the date so that she could, you know, because she liked that one better, and then she didn't end up doing it. I bet she didn't run 200 yards. <laughs> <laughs> she did come yesterday, though, which was really nice. Uh, I thought she was, where was she live, in New Orleans? Yeah, she moved to New Orleans, but she came up to Providence. It was in Providence yesterday. That's very sweet of her. Now, yeah, it was really nice. She dumped Charlie, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Because I saw, no, this was a while ago, 
And um, and Joe is like, I'm pretty sure she's dumping me. I don't know, man. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> and I go, all right, I'll check with you later. And I never talk to him again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but she came yesterday, which was nice. You know, my parents came. It, it was, it was a really, it was very fun. I had, a, I had the whole thing was fun. Was there any point where you thought I can't do this? I can't. Um, I hit a wall. <laughs> at mile, tw- at mile nineteen or twenty. Yeah. Um, I drank too much water. They have water stops along the yeah. way, and it was just sort of splashing around my belly. And then right in front of me, some guy threw up on the side of the course, and I started to get a little bit nervous, but yeah. I kept it together. <laughs> Ah, uh, she drank too much water. Uh, how do you know how much water to drink? Now, you don't even look like you're sweating in this picture. That just looks like you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, in general, don't really sweat that much. So and I, Chris I was sweating you. so much right now. Yeah. My right side's like a goddamn lake. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's a fucking salty lake. We call it oh. armpit, Ricky Lake. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, this is amazing. So you didn't even have a friend out there? No, I did. I mean, my friends were uh, were all along the course cheering me on and stuff. Oh, but that's nice. Now, what did this yeah. sign say? Go, Molly. It, Suck it. It says Molly Bolly. That's stupid. <laughs> and which friend Why? is that? That's my friend Mary Claire. Oh. Uh, magazine? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. the magazine. It was a really oh, fun well. day. And, and, and then the other thing is, in the beginning when I was training, I used to listen to podcasts and stuff, but yeah. towards the end, I, I didn't listen to anything. It's like a very meditative process if you can get into it. So you started to just be into the run itself. Now, did your dad take you all out for lobster after? <laughs> we went for pretzels and beer. It was awesome. Oh, that's nice. great. All yeah, right, well, great. congratulations. The Way to go, Molly. Is up on Thanks our Twitter. so much, you guys. Miss you tons. I hope everything's good. And, Molly, we meant, we meant to write something nice there next to it, not just put it up, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, take it the way it is. Well, All I right? appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, bye, honey. Bye. Love that, Molly. She's seems like best. seems like she's rubbing it in our faces. I well, think she she's should. humble. She has every right to. I think you know she's I mean? humble. Right now? If there was a world, she'd be standing on the top of it, you know? All right, we're going to break. Don Jameson stopping in uh, tonight. He's uh, performing at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Wednesday through Saturday. Go to Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club.com and his album, Communication Breakdown, available on iTunes and Amazon.com at Real. Don Jameson for Super Tweeter. So be a next. This is Bennington. We're back in the Bennington show. Don Jameson looking like a million bucks comes through drinking his big monster. <laughs> uh, what is, what flavor is that, by the way? So this is uh, Ultra Sunrise, mm. an orangey type of thing. You do a you do a monster a day. Not no, not every day. Yeah, you know when I come in here, I like to get you know a little extra amped up. What about when you're doing your set? You like to be a little amped up for your set? I, I usually drink one about an hour before my set. All right, I'm going to tell you this and see if you've ever seen this before. So the other night, I'm hosting at the stand, and everybody's happy because Mr. Jim Norton has drunk. <laughs> they're like Norton's here, please, <laughs> please Norton's here. Give him a nice uh, introduction. So I introduced Like you wouldn't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I introduced him like a million bucks, by the way. And I go to shake his hand. It's hot as hell. I turn around. He's taking a paper cup full of coffee to the stage. The stage. And I'm like, have I ever seen a comic drinking coffee on the stage? And I couldn't <laughs> think of it for the time. <laughs> Steaming hot coffee if I'm going to go by his hand. Particular it's evening. It's evening yes. tonight. It's evening. You have yes. lights on you. Even yes. if you're Stephen Wright and you just sit there and deadpan one-liners all right. night, you don't want to be drinking hot coffee. Thank you. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. And yet, Jim just carried it off beautifully. Hot coffee, funny jokes, <laughs> hot coffee, funny jokes. <laughs> See, I like cold monster, yes. funny jokes. Yes. yes. It works. But, and, and, like, you have the same reaction a lot of people have. It's like, oh, my God, you know, I, you know, those things would get me way too wired. But it's it's like anything. It's like, you know, if you drink five bottles of Jack Daniels, you're going to be messed and, up. And I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Look, that that is true. That is true. I, I've never been able to find a good balance with anything. You know what, too, when you were talking about bringing a hot beverage on the stage, I think I wouldn't want to only just because of, like, the face 
and the body yeah. language that you have to make when you're afraid of burning yourself. Like, I feel like I, I don't even particularly like drinking hot coffee in front of people because I feel like I'm just like, you know, when you're doing like cautious lips, like, yeah. oh, it's my but ear. I know a guy who yeah. t- had a teacup <laughs> and a saucer and held them. Down. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sean, there's a, there's a comic who does that, that he opened for me in San Francisco once. And that, yeah. I said, this is where I draw the line. Right. No more sipping tea for, in a, like a ceramic, little ceramic yeah. cup. Yeah. And he had the pinky out and the but whole it's thing. It's very dainty and it's very like, Oh, I see. Like you, Fancy. you brand yourself immediately. That way, in the yeah. same way as if you had a bottle of Jack in your hand. I got to say, you know? I think that's hurt his career. Yes, it's held back <laughs> quite a bit. All right, we were talking about your new album. Wow. Is out right now. Sure. Um, because we saw that it made top 10 in iTunes. Exciting moment for you? Yes, so that means I've sold in the double digits at least. Sweet. <laughs> and that, uh, because the albums today, you, you the real direction is the sum to these platforms that play comedy, right? Yeah. Yeah, Which that's the thing. Can be very lucrative if enough of them are doing it correctly. Yeah, there's different deals you can make, but um, you know, I, I'm with this record company, Metal Blade Records, yes, which is the greatest, you know, because yeah. you know, with bands like Cannibal Corpse and Six Feet Under, they're, they're really not going to ask me to tone down my act, yeah, at any point. So, um, but they put it out, and they they embrace all the streaming services, so they just put it out everywhere, and you know, you might get a nickel here, but a couple bucks over there. I right. mean, Sirius XM, you, you know, if they play it like on on. This this channel or yeah. the channels that's where you can really make some decent money so i know how much they play per spin and it's it's much more than i thought that they because it's much more than anybody else i don't know why they pay more or whether they want an exclusive with some of these people but if you got them to play it you know the way that you play a record like a you know, a top 40 record, you can make a small fortune doing it. By the way, I was with Jim Florentine the other night, not just Jim Norton. And Florentine... Now, he, just, he doesn't bring coffee on stage. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and I'm going to say this. His his energy was very calm and cool, right? Until some attractive young ladies came in and showed some interest to in them. <laughs> then, as I said, I'm... Um, I'm uh, hosting, so I'm kind of hanging down near the stage, and he comes back downstairs and goes like this. Uh, Ron, do you have any more of those breath mints that you're always carrying around? In <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> right so away, I'm laughing my ass off, and he goes like this. And uh, do you got to see Alice? I go, I don't know what, <laughs> what you think here. But he was working this very, very hard. I don't know how it eventually turned out. But he was working at like a high school boy. He was putting that much energy. Yeah, he was like Jose Canseco in his prime, just <laughs> jacked up on steroids and, yes. and who knows what game. else. Yeah. yeah, he's full of PEDs. Yeah. If he ever gets tested, he's yeah. going to get suspended. But the um, the hope is he remarries <laughs> and gets and then a divorce and another <laughs> new album and special out of that. <laughs> Very, very funny, though. Well, that's how comics are. You know, yes. you know, like we are totally emo- we're not em- emotionally open with each other. Right. You know, so it's always like, yeah, when Jim went through his divorce, I'm like, man, this I know this sucks for you. I re- feel really bad. But, you know, you're going to get a good hour out of it. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's how like touchy feely we get. Yeah, that is kind of sad if somebody brings up about their dad, their dad dying and, um, you know, gets off the line about it. Somebody will be like, uh, you going to use that or what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Cause if you don't want that. Yeah. You know, I think that's got to be like all life milestones for comedians. Like I'm sure the same thing is like you, like you find out you're going to be a mom or a dad. And right. you're just like, how does this change my act? What is, but I will say this. I've heard Bonnie say nice things about Rich, but I can't say I've ever heard Rich say one nice thing about Bonnie. You mean on stage? No, off stage. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on stage, they both trash each other. Yeah. But off stage, I've heard Bonnie say nice things yes, about Rich. I have. I can't. I can't recall. Maybe it's happened, and I just wasn't there. Does complimenting her looks count? He even plays that down. Though. <laughs> he even plays that. Yeah, it'll be like for a Canadian, she's not bad. Yes. Uh, even though she has that new sexy pickup on her. Yeah, everybody Twitter. is uh, a buzz about her. Yeah. Her, she's uh, another Twitter one. That, she, yeah, she doesn't age either. No. Well, I saw ages. her a few weeks ago. She looks good. Yeah. Well, I've said this before, and I'm sticking with this, and Canadians are smart enough with this. If you want to age well, you have to A, stay out of the sun, or B, be a black person. 
Okay. Uh, or even a brown person, because right. that age, that doesn't age the way white. Look at look up the guy Chocolate Rain, right? Ten years after the guy who sang Chocolate Rain, which by the way, can we believe it's ten years? Everybody, my God, um, after, it feels like it was just yesterday. After the old, what do you mean, Prince? No, <laughs> the song, oh, that's um, Purple Rain. Uh, o and A just played the hell out of this song, Chocolate Rain, so it always stayed in my head. Look at him now, 10 years after. It's the same guy. What? Chris. Yeah. That's, that's the same guy. That's exactly the same. No, the same. Yeah. no that's uh, Raj from What's Happening. <laughs> First of all, you just, dated, you just dated yourself oh, by bringing up Raj. <laughs> Good current reference <laughs> by me. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> Rerun Raj. Well, in that, in that one he does, but down, yeah. down there he looks a little more like Michael Jackson-ish. Yeah. And it's also his head's tiny. Yeah. yeah. He's, a little, he's a strange, strange He still dude. has the yeah. same baby face, though. So, well, that's how you keep yeah. healing. You get the Zika virus and your head shrinks. No, yeah. that is not. Wait, your head shrinks and the Zika oh, yeah. virus? Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. fucking know this. That babies are born with little pinheads. And, Chris, you said that you got this shit bit out of you when you were down there. There is no right? doubt I don't have Zika at this fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> Zika? Zika? Yeah, Zika was Zika. He went up, he went up to Zika. Literally. Wait, you say what we're all just using We literally Zika just anyway. said yeah. Zika a hundred times. Is that just to be a dick? You yeah. the islands? Uh, St. Martin, yeah, the islands, yeah. And how many mosquito bites do you think you got? Oh, uh, 40, 50. Covered? This covered my back and legs were just covered in fucking in bites. And my, my hands. What were you, on naked and afraid? <laughs> There's a current reference for you, Ronnie. No, I do. I will also, I will watch Naked and Afraid going, this is the dumbest show ever, but watch every time. That's yeah. the one they where they in. drop people off and they're just, they they're have, naked, uh, yeah. plus afraid, <laughs> and they don't know each other. Plus mosquitoes. And then uh. neither one of them you can tell is a good body, the male or the female. No. Neither one has a good right. body, but they're forced to, they have no fire, so they're just, Fucking balls the asshole the first night just <laughs> going on each other. <laughs> but you know that what always pissed me off about that show is like the beginning of the show they go we're dropping them off in yeah. the most dangerous of the Panamanian jungles yeah. where there's panthers and lions right. and dragons and <laughs> aliens from outer space and they show all the shots of these vicious animals and alligators and sharks are on the land and and nothing comes near them no. for 21 days they're eating yeah. grubs for three yeah. weeks. <laughs> Uh, and there's a cameraman right there who I guarantee you I'd punch him in the stomach and take his pants. <laughs> That's the first thing I'd do to survive. Give me those pants. <laughs> yeah. You don't need them. I'm That's a survival up. skill. Yes, it is. Yeah. It absolutely is. Beat up the cameraman yeah. for his Levi's. Yeah. Uh, but when you're on the road, you're forced to watch a lot of those kind of shows, right? I, I feel the same way about it. You do. Yeah. I'm, I'm horrified by it, but yet yeah. I will watch it. Which is TV itself. You know what I mean? TV itself, yeah. you're like, what kind of idiot watches this while you're watching it? <laughs> well, yeah. the, the other thing with that show is it sort of made that uh, man versus wild guy look like a pussy. Yeah. And they also said that a couple times he was staying in the, you know, right behind a Hampton Inn. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He, yeah. he wasn't that deep into the wilderness. <laughs> like, like yeah. yeah, like all the shots of the pyramid. You just, yeah. like, oh, my God, that must be thousands of miles of desert. Mm -hmm. There's a Kentucky Fried Chicken like 50 feet right. away if you turn the camera the other way. But when we were little kids in my neighborhood, we would put up a tent in the backyard and all the kids would fucking stay in it overnight. Just as much fun. As if we put it in the deep woods. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're in a fucking tent with your buddies. What more you want to do? It's just and scary. We got a chance to do this the summer of pool hopping, where we decided in the middle of the night we would hit every pool in our neighborhood and swim in people's pools. And you have to just quietly go into it. <laughs> You're swimming like a fucking rat, like you don't want to be discovered <laughs> and up and off on the other side. But uh, also, there wasn't a lot of pools in my neighborhood, if I'm going to be totally honest about it. <laughs> There's like yeah. three pools. But well, it seemed three, like a lot yeah. when you were younger. Three is, I mean, when we're calling it the built-in pool, you know that there's far too many above-ground pools. Yeah. That you're going like, hey, he's got a built-in pool. Instead of just calling it a pool. <laughs> plug away, Chris. It's like you never plugged for Don and he's got a new album. Yeah. Don, Don's new oh. album. 
Communication Breakdown is available now on <laughs> iTunes and Amazon.com. And Don's performing at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Wednesday, May 24th through Saturday, May 27th. Go to UncleVinny'sComedyClub.com for tickets and more information. And on Twitter, it's at Real Don Jameson. Tell us a little bit about Uncle v- Vinny's because that's a legendary club. Yeah, well, no. And I'll, can I just tell you one more yeah. quick story about the Man vs. Yeah. Wild? So so this is when the show was really like starting to get big. I was going up to do uh, the Opie and Anthony show when, yeah. when those two boys were still. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I, didn't, I never saw anything about it. Yeah. Apparently they're not together. Um, so I was just standing in the hallway waiting to, to go on. And I and all the way down the far end of the hallway, I just see this guy like peeking in every office. And he's looking around. He's turning in circles. He's completely confused. And as he's getting closer and closer, I'm going, this guy looks familiar. And he comes up to me. He's like, oh, can you tell me where the Opie and Anthony studio is? It's the man versus wild guy. Yeah. I'm like, if he's lost <laughs> in, the studio? in a New York City <laughs> high rise, how the hell is he getting through this rainforest? <laughs> you should just send him the wrong way and follow him with a camera to see how he's worked his way around. He's, you know, he's living off of fucking pencil shavings or whatever he needs to do. Yeah, paint chips. Awful, yeah. He's drinking his own piss. It's been a half hour. Chris, by the way, your hair is poofy today. What is it? Happened? Yeah, I mean, it's the like 1950s bag. poofy. That's, that's a good thing, though. Yeah, but why? I don't know. I, I didn't shower this Are you, oh, are smart, you doing like a new do? Because you are so tight on the side more than you usually are, yeah, and take, then you got full poof. Yeah, Give me a profile. A, it's bad hair. Yeah, you are. Yeah, are you doing a new hairstyle? All right, so what happened was I had to get a fucking haircut for this uh, wedding. But my regular barber wasn't there, so I had to go to uh, a different barber. You got a better barber? You have you a think, better... This yes, is this better. is a man's haircut. Are you saying Enrique's better than Kelvin? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, I fucking love Enrique. <laughs> yeah, Enrique's your guy. Yeah, I see them in Asbury Park all the time. On, <laughs> he kept it thick on top and, and thin on the sides. It's beautiful. Right. You could do, yeah. like... You really take care of that shit. You could do, like, Not. a full-on pompadour. <laughs> You know so, what I mean? Just get a real poof here. Yeah. Keep it nice and tight on the sides. It's interesting. I feel like Kelvin's been fucking me over all these years. Yeah. What was oh. Kelvin doing? Well, that's like, well, that's the, the exact reaction when you go to a new hair cutter that you always get. Like they get they they get into your hair and they go, oh. <laughs> Who cut your hair before? I mean, this is going to take me forever to fix this mess. <laughs> yeah, I, know. Like, I was going to him for 15 years. <laughs> Two chairs down. Yeah. Um, what but, happened? They cut yeah. your hair with a spoon? Yeah. <laughs> Scumbag. Chris, this you, is a better you know what, look. This you know, is a style. You know how Chris looks right now? If World War II was over and the fighter pilots came back, but they had gained yeah. a lot of weight somehow. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's a World War II fighter pilot That's cool. Haircut. Yeah. You know? It's cool. I like it. Yeah. Get you need a, some goggles. You need to get a close up of yourself. Yeah. Right. Selfie. <laughs> okay. you need and then we'll put that out for Tinder people pick. to see. Yeah. Okay. That's your Tinder pick. You yeah. Think? There's yeah. your fucking Tinder pick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, believe it or not, Chris Stanley kills on Tinder. Destroy. Wow. I do well. Why don't you come here and then it's I'll shocking, try to take a true. nice one. Let's yeah. see if I can get the angle on it. I, I never did like that. a dick, like have a very solemn look yeah, about like, it. Be, sexy. Be kind of serious. Look sexy. Now, why do you want to put Bennington up here and for a Tinder pick? Can you just move this Torture? careful with the bear paw, please? Uh, Make it towards yourself. I think I'm more of a bear claw than a bear paw. <laughs> yeah, the, right, the, so, the, the, yeah, the young kids are good so, at the, yeah. the dating apps. Stop, no, no stop with no, this no, stupid face. Yeah. No, look serious. Right. I can't look serious. <laughs> Why not? Over here. It is too hot. Right. Yeah. Hot. yeah. Stop Just with the fucking on. face like that. <laughs> Tell me not to smile with a smile. Look Just sexy. Like, like, yeah, but it's sexy like here. a little bit of a... Can you like cheat out a little bit? It wasn't a great angle for you. And like, look here, please. What is he doing with his face? Let me Nothing take a look good. over here. This yeah. is the beard good. is strong. Thank you. Can you the beard looks good. Can you head downward? I need to get he just needs goggles dog. for that look. Actually, that looked like a fucking GQ. All right, what do you think <laughs> of this? I can up the... Uh, it's fucking beautiful. It's really good. Yeah. I'm going to up the light a little. So now, I like the fact that you got he's captured in some shadow, too, on one side. It makes him somewhat mysterious to me. <laughs> That's nice, right? It's fucking really good. You're a good looking guy, Chris. Thanks. Don't guys. make a dumb look on your face every time you turn around. Yeah, so, I and like the weird myself. hands that he does. Like that? Yeah. All right. Like, this isn't yeah. good? You want me to put this up? Can I tell you who did that first? Who's that? You're going to get mad at me. Who? That's fucking Davy Mac move. That's a Davy Mac move? Yes. A lot of things that you're doing. Fucking inanimate objects. <laughs> doing weird things <laughs> with your hand. Going, That's all Dave. Uh oh. But. I'm saying you oh. can catch him. Should I put it up now? Well, let me take a good look at it. Cause I'm happy with it, but I yeah. want you to be happy with it. You know what I mean? Now, see, that's, I mean, that's, that's a, a look. 
right oh, there. Oh, my God. The front God. cover of my CD. A well, Communication Breakdown, which is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, but here's the thing, Ron. You you didn't even hear the CD. You, you saw me at Eddie's studio. Yeah. You looked at the front cover, and you looked at the back cover, and you gave it the most accurate review of any... Comedy CD, because you looked at the front with the long hair of my yeah. picture and went, yeah, that look worked in 88 New Jersey. Yes. And then the back cover is a picture of me performing in the modern day and, you, and with my chest puffed out. And you're like, that's a guy who's telling the audience, I'm here to give you a show. Right. And it's how do you know my essence better than me even? I have that ability <laughs> that I can look at a person <laughs> and say, here's exactly who you are. But there is a difference. You can tell. Uh, I'll, I'll say about that. A lot of the new guys, they don't want to act like a show is going on. Yeah. You do. You want to come up and take the stage. A lot of the new guys are like, I don't know why I'm up here. Put my leg against but, the wall. What do you guys want to talk about? Or somebody, some people say, I'm really nervous tonight. I'm like, why would you tell the audience that? No. Shit your pants, keep going. Exactly. It's fucking beautiful. It's really good. I'm yeah. going to post it now. Very good. You're gonna get. You're gonna be swipe right so many times. Oh, yeah. today. Uh, so I'm much. saying you know worry about. It. I want you to use that as your new picture, mm -hmm. but I don't want everybody to think that your name is Bennington. Because the <laughs> yeah, like I don't know why you turned that on. Yeah, they'll he think that's where think... you shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put this so, on the Instagram as well. I'm gonna send it over. It's yeah, let's beautiful. get it up across. Social Literally media every lines. platform don't we look have. Look at you there. You don't feel like your hair looks a lot better. Your it's hair different. is so much better. It's different. I feel like yeah. it's weird. And you don't like yourself looking a little more serious and not like a fucking three-year-old that just saw a clown. <laughs> it's hard for me not to uh, act like that in my face. Why? I don't know. It's a natural thing of where no, my face is. No, it's not natural. Insecurity. You're hiding behind it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're hiding. hiding. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I agree with you guys. See, he's that hiding. look, I, I do like the hair this way because yeah. it's sort of like, you know, he's got the Johnny Depp thing going on. Like, right. It's like, oh, I just rolled out of bed, but yeah, yeah yes. I look fabulous. So right, but it's crybaby Johnny Depp. It's yeah. like a bad boy. He's not, <laughs> exactly. he's not sucking the, the corporate balls. He's doing something <laughs> different. Yeah. Crybaby. Yeah. Yeah. To me, you look like a World War II veteran that we can't get you even to say your experiences. Oh, They're yeah. so fucking awful. That you're keeping them buried inside. Just have to drink to hide them more, you know? No, yeah. you, you like to drink. I mean, oh. the problem with you <laughs> is when you do drink, you you get very chatty, you know? Mm, yeah. Like, what, last time that you were drunk, you said to me, I like the guy's cock. And I'm like, Chris, I, what? you're drunk right now, and I don't want to be around that. I don't remember saying that. <laughs> you did say it. That's, I really... And I even got you to write it down and sign it. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I could use it against you later. I hope I was, like, joking. I just don't remember you're actually doing funny. that in my real life. You're not funny. Don Jameson is funny. Yeah. That's why I nailed him perfectly. But you, not funny. No, I just say terrible things when I'm drunk. But Don Jameson, <laughs> he's performing at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Wednesday, May 24th through Saturday, May 27th. Go to Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club dot com for tickets and his new album communication breakdown that's available on itunes and amazon.com now i try to get you to talk about uncle vinny's because this is a legendary club it's been around how long no it's been around uh, i think 12 years now but it's got an edgy vibe to it right yeah it's a weird room have you mm -hmm. been down there no. for, and by the way i'm so mad at you for already you're like amazing at stand-up you've been doing it like it's three easy. weeks it's easy, it's easy. <laughs> it's so, seriously it's so fucking easy come down uncle vinny's because <laughs> that's where it gets hard because <laughs> <laughs> i love the room but yeah. it's not a room every comic can play right you know it's because it's not a traditional first of all it's byob Right, oh, which is a great idea, you know, because then you can have more. Well, but you know, you know why there's a two drink minimum because yeah. that's about as much as you want people drinking. Right? Yeah, you don't want two like drink maximum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want giant bottles of Grey Goose yeah. and and coolers full of Bud cans being wheeled in. But that's the kind of the vibe in Uncle Vinny's. Yeah. Uh, but there, yeah, and everybody down there's a character. I did my last album in Uncle Vinny's, yeah. and I wanted to keep all that character in there. You know, I didn't want to cut any of that stuff out. Um, the lights are up pretty bright so you can see the whole you can pick literally pick on people in the mm -hmm. back of the club so but it's that freaks some comics out yeah i like all the lights up i want to see everybody you know but it does i know it does make people a little some nervous. people are just like i don't need to see every face because not all the faces are friendly even yeah. if you're killing there's always one face who's like uh yeah you know, like you <laughs> and that's the one face you'll look at you're yes like, why doesn't that guy oh, what's what's not only yeah he's just quiet like he's not heckling 
He's just quietly disgusted by yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Well, there is. It's true. A lot of people don't realize it. At just about every comedy show, any night of the week you go to a comedy show, there will be at least one person in the room who's so insanely miserable right. that they actually went to a comedy club to prove to themselves that not even professional comedians can cheer them up. Yeah, I mean, let's just imagine you if you were drugged to a ballet or an opera, <laughs> and that's what I think happens to some people. You know, they are like, I don't want to go, and their four friends are saying, oh, we're going. And you're going to go and you're going to enjoy this. And they think to themselves, I don't enjoy it because I'm not smart enough to follow along with what people are talking about. And some people feel like, you know, the pressure of being front row is too much. Like they just like to sit back and enjoy. They're still having a great time, right. even if they're not just like a good audience member. Some people think this, please don't ask me what I do for a living. Please yeah. don't ask me where I'm from. And they, and they can't enjoy the show because yeah. of that. But to me, that's them screaming out. Please include me in the show. Yes. yes. That's what they a comic need, hears. <laughs> they, need it. they need it more than anyone else. They need like, to yeah. break this thing. <laughs> yeah, like if, we're, if I'm standing by the door and I hear, you know, a table go, we'll sit anywhere, just not in the front. Yeah. I know I'm going to destroy them at some point. <laughs> <in the> set. <laughs> I don't care where they're sitting in the crowd. I'm going to find them. Now, by the way, something else your buddy Jim Florentine brought up. He says he does not enjoy the band Kiss. And I would think that people would think that he did. I would have been are, are you a Kiss guy, yes or no? A huge Kiss guy. Yeah. First album ever, Destroyer. And Norton, huge Kiss guy. Yes. Uh, Eddie Trunk, huge Kiss guy. But Florentine, no. No, we, you know, he never was. Yeah, he he's, says he's, he's gotten hate like mail that. about it. He's gotten hate mail from people <laughs> saying you're trolling us. You really do <laughs> like Kiss. Is there a metal band that other people like? Or a hard rock band? That you don't. That other people like that I don't. Yeah, well, you're like, here's a popular band that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's weird. That's a weird thing with metalheads, too. Yeah. It's like we don't want our bands to get too big. And then when they do, you, you kind of yeah, you turn on them. Although I still like Metallica, you know, even though Metallica is like just one of the biggest bands in the world. Yes. I still do like them, although they are getting a little goofy with them. You know, playing the songs on a little toy piano well, on just, Fallon. I think and, they're bored. You know what I mean? I think they're at the point like, what could we possibly do? Another giant tour? You know, do, is there a reason that we're here? I mean, that happens to every big band. Yeah. You know? Like, they worry, I just don't want to play the hits. Where you want to say, relax, play your hits, enjoy your life. Yeah, you and they still put out good music. Yeah. They're playing like five or six songs off the new albums. So yeah. Just do that. You don't need Lady Gaga to come in and, yeah. and, and, you know, and stage dive and then have a bunch of, you know, dancers in the back with cut off flannels, mm -hmm. you know, pretending they're moshing in the back. It's, you know, it's just a show. But that's funny. You don't want your band to get too big. Yeah. You don't want, and you feel the same way, Gal? Yeah, I mean, there, there is something that happens. Like, you can want the best for your favorite band. And then when that happens, it does feel like you've lost them. They now yeah. belong to the masses. And it's like you want good things to happen for them, but there is something that happens to me. Oh, yeah, no. like this band Ghost yeah. is the big metal band now. Everybody loves Ghost. God forbid, you know, right. you don't love Ghost. And I, I, they're all right. You don't love Ghost that much. Nah. Yeah. I like the whole image. Like the the singer has a big, like, Pope head, yeah. Papa Demetrius, and then the the, the the band guys are all nameless schools. They're all in like, you know, cloak, dark cloaks, and you don't know who they are. I like all that. I like the satanic part of it, but the music's just okay. It's kind of like a poppy blue oyster cult. Well, they look kind of scary to me. I'll say that. They're scary. Yeah. yeah. They look like I feel like I've to... seen like some of their stuff. There's like, there's something kind of cool about them though. Like I feel like I've seen like a video or two of them. Well, theirs. the mask is cool and the yeah. face that, uh, Bringing back Danger Island from the Banana Splits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you're just trying to outdo me with the 70s shows. <laughs> now, um, but is there anything outside of the hard rock or metal that you enjoy? Somebody that you would say, I like that person. Nothing. 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 Is there a female singer that you enjoy? Just, just maybe whacking my bag too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so that is a way to enjoy. Sure. You, yeah, if that's a way to enjoy. Yes, I, I okay, like a lot good. of them. Yeah, just to whack your bag to. Does Jim? Does he like anybody else? Because I know Eddie Trunk does. Well, you you saw what happens when he gets on the prowl. And yeah. Then, you know. Oh yeah, he'll say anything <laughs> to anyone. Um, he what is now? You know what? He's pretty. He's like me. Yeah. He, but the, Eddie, Eddie goes across the board. Yeah. You know, he actually likes pop. He likes some, yeah, he likes some pop, you know, he likes, the, like, the raspberries. But you like some and... power pop. You like, like, Cheap Trick and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And is that because of the guitar and not the angelic singing? <laughs> oh, the singing's amazing. Come it's, on. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. But I would think that maybe that was a little too melodic and, like I say, pop for you. No, nah, no, they, their hits are. But if yeah. you listen to full albums, you know, they're, they're a hard rock band. I, I listen to both. I like okay. trick on both levels. Yeah. Uh, so this, I, I I don't know if I've ever met anyone like you, though, Don. This is, I, there's, like, there's no country artist that's ever lived that you're like, oh, I kind of like that guy. All right, look, if you if you put on Johnny Cash or something, okay. I'm, I'll listen okay. to that. Cash is almost metal. You know. You know what yeah. I mean? He's metal in spirit. Well, he's, yeah. right. He's uh, heavier than a lot of heavy right. metal bands. <laughs> yeah. In terms of lyrical content and, you know, when, he, like, when he did, life. when he did, um, I'll say this, when he did um, that Nine Inch Nails song, Hurt. Yeah. It, it, it changed. I mean, he actually took that song from Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Where it's not, yeah. th- people don't. And you know, when even you, Trent Reznor said they. Someone was asking about what do you think of Johnny Cash's version. He goes, "It's his song now. Yeah, it's not. I can't do it anymore." He's like, he did uh, such yeah. a good job on it. With, with Trent, I always thought it was a song about self mutilation or whatever. And with Cash, I'm like, oh, he did some heroin. He fucked himself up. Good. Right. That's bad. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but did you ever see the video too when his wife is just staring oh, at him? Yeah. You did hurt yourself, dude. They're just two <laughs> busted up old country people. <laughs> but you know what's even, I think more than just having a one track mind with music. Yeah. This is what freaks me out. That doesn't freak me out. What freaks me out is people who have no attachment to music. Oh, no, no. I know people like that. I know two that say they don't like music. That's yeah, even worse. People. To be indifferent to it, I go, yeah. oh, okay, you know, oh, maybe they listen to the yeah. radio or whatever is on the, right. you know, on in the car. But to actually say, I don't like music. Or, <laughs> yeah, it's worse. Some people go, I like all music, you know. Right. Like, oh. like they have nothing. Not answer. Right. They don't, they haven't found that passion right. that connects them. And they kind of are just like, if something's pleasant to listen to, they're like, this is fine. Anything's fine. Put on anything. Yeah, that's, like, that's a creepy. Type of per- yeah. yeah. But oh. to you, much weirder to just be like, music has no effect on me. Dude, I just oh. came up with the perfect fucking TV show pitch. Uh, Don Jameson, mm-hmm. Jim Florentine, going to concerts that are not in their wheelhouse. We send them to EDM shows. I love we it. We send them to Korea. <laughs> yes, we send them to Korea for K-pop. Taylor Swift <laughs> with the children. So Dude, good. This fucking show was going to be so funny. Do it. Run it to your manager with it today. I, I love the idea, but yeah. I, I'll be drunker than Chris Stanley on a Friday That'll night. That'll be great, let's though. Go. Do you party. guys drunk and miserable <laughs> trying to make it through? And let's face it, it's your job. We've all had jobs we didn't like. You know what I mean? We've all had jobs we hated to go to, but we needed the money. This will be yours. I love yeah, it. We Do send it. you guys to just show after show that you can't relate to. And then, you know what, at the end of the season... Yeah, we'll let you go to a metal show and enjoy yourself. Don James is in the studio. <laughs> Don's performing at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Wednesday, May 24th through Saturday, May 27th. Go to UncleVinny'sComedyClub.com for tickets and more information. And Don's new album, Communication Breakdown, is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com and on Twitter at Real Don Jameson. Uh, but uh, any, you know, I know you probably get asked all the time about that metal show, which I thought was a great show. And really... Uh, a big part of what volume does here is based on that, you know, people talking about music. Any chances, uh, any talk? About I, getting- I don't think in America, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough sell, man. I mean, believe, <laughs> believe it or not, no TV networks or streaming networks are looking for three middle-aged guys from Jersey who wear Iron Maiden shirts. So. Wow. I it's, think it's uh, crazy, though. Yeah. But you guys had a wonderful run out of it. It was great. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and, you know, and it would be funny, the the end of that season where you send us to all the K-pop and the EDM shows and all that will we'll show us at a, at a metal show where 
everybody's wanting to get a picture with us and yes. all that stuff because our yeah. fans have, have been amazing, you know. Yeah. And then we're equally miserable there because it's like, <laughs> Kiss hasn't played this song since 72 <laughs> and I got to take a picture with this guy who stinks of beer and shit. Uh, Vito, you're a person, like there are music genres that don't touch. And EDM, I have tried a couple times. I've never taken Molly, but I don't understand how listening to a computer bounce you would compare to rock and roll. Well, like when you're at a show, it's mainly, it's like the music is not even the main part. It's like the stage setup and the pyrotechnics and the flashing lights. All right, can I can I give this to you? You can get that at any rock show over the last forty years. So you can get that same thing and have great music. Yeah, but this is part. It's like it's it's like manufactured to all of the production. And like then there's artists like Dead Mouse who like he makes every single sound he plays. Like, so he doesn't just sample other music. He actually makes every I know, single it's sound. It's so terrible. It still sounds like a computer. Like you said, he makes every sound, not that he makes music. Well, yeah, I mean, it, together it's music, but mm. it's the, the concerts are fun to go to, but I mean, the drugs and the the production are a big I part of it. You know how they put everybody in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, no matter what kind of music you play now? Yeah. Will there be an EDM? I'll say who will be the first EDM oh, did, act that goes in. Ron, if they put if they put the guy with the mat, the giant mouse head in That's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yeah. I, I'm 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 out. You're, you're done. No, I'm, then I am going really. to K-pop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> willingly. <laughs> Is Fat Boy Slim in? I think he would be the first guy if he's not in. Uh, yeah, he's not in. And but, yeah, he's well before thing. Dead Mouth. Yeah, and Flatboy Slim again. You, there's too many ties to more just like dance music, disco music. There's that's like that's a little bit easier to understand. Where I think EDM for Ron is just like so <laughs> far in the distance, but you yeah. can see what's great about a Fatboy no, Slim song. I, I, it's the, danceable. What's that famous Fatboy Slim? The, Crazy. Uh, and no, the uh, <laughs> check it out now. Mm. Oh yeah, Farm, so soul, like I get that yeah. completely. But I don't understand the. Yeah, I mean that's that's fucking insanity to me. Yeah. That means the robots have won. You know, I feel like that should be at the end of Terminator. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like you should just look up and yeah. Terminator. Like, Fuck, here's another great idea. You just have the Terminator. On. I feel like I'm in a scene from Train Spotting. Yes. Um, God, that will be. I, I hate that you even brought. Now I'm going to be thinking about that all day. Yeah, everything. We'll go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They don't care what it is. No. If if one guy, if one DJ goes in, I would guess it's a guy like Calvin Harris who like did a bunch of hits with like Rihanna's. And I don't know who that is. Skrillex, would he go in? Uh, I don't know. Skrillex is like he's big, but he's more like in one. He's like dubstep, and dubstep's kind of dying out yeah. now. But he collaborates like with metal bands. That yeah. Skrillex guy, right? Yeah. I think he did oh, some yeah. stuff like with Corn and yeah. yeah, yeah. And he did, and I think he helped with Bieber's last song. Diplo's another guy who could go in because of his producing background. Diplo, isn't that a dating app? Yeah, I don't even know what Diplo is. <laughs> Diplo is doing very well for himself. Dip Diplo, oh, getting all this. Diplo should be like a southern girl chewing tobacco, <laughs> sucking your cock. <laughs> He's doing the Diplo. That's good. Yeah. Oh God, Chris. What? It was a guy that was blowing. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> In well. this circumstance that I just manufactured right here before you, yeah. it was a guy. So there you go. So now who's gay? Yes, I am. <laughs> Now who's wearing the rainbow flag? <laughs> Only when he's drunk. That's it. Oh, God, I can't even look at the fucking TV. There's always something stupid every time I turn it up there. Just lunatics one after another. There's too much news. Too much news. I need a little fucking break from news. I would just like, uh, I wish they would go like this. We're just going to take five minutes and show a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Look, he's massaging his scalp. This is good. Now this it's 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 so crazy to the point of now they have like the guy the Facebook guy had to say we are we're hiring all these new people to um to ensure that the the news that you see on Facebook is not fake news, and I'm like. I just assume every news story on Facebook is a fake news story yeah. at this point. That you don't need to hire a whole new staff First of all, to I, do that. I think we could get a lot rid of a lot of fake news if you just stop my two sisters <laughs> from passing <laughs> things on. I think if you stop those two girls, you probably take out eighty percent of the fake news. <laughs> 
It was like Giuliani, you know, when he came into office the first time and he said, yeah. I'm going to get rid of the people selling stuff by the tunnels and the yeah. squeegee guys. And the next thing you know, the whole city was cleaned up. No more right. addicts, no more dealers, no more mafia. That's like if we just take out your two sisters. But here's the thing that happened. <laughs> we'll though. clean up 85% of the when fake Giuliani news. Giuliani did that. My fucking windshield looks like shit now. You know what I mean? He's not a beautiful, what you, clean, what clear... What, you pay for someone to do that? <laughs> an establishment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who else will do it? I can't get anybody to do it no. now. That's why I have to ride a city bike. Yes. <laughs> a city bike. Yeah. I'm going to give the city my credit card number. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, we're city bikes. We don't stop at any fucking red light in town. No. City bikes, run us down. We don't wear helmets. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't been on a bike in years. I know. Just nothing like seeing a 55-year-old German woman. like this. Yeah. No! <laughs> I haven't done this since I was 12. Chris, will you give me the wrap it up? That's why you're looking nervous. Yeah, yeah. We can you say something nice about Don? I will. Sure. Don Jameson's in the studio. His out, al- his new album. Oh, uh, you're just saying this because you're drunk. I'm sober. Don's new album, Communication Breakdown, is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. And he's performing at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Wednesday, May 24th through Saturday, May 27th. Go to UncleVinny'sComedyClub.com for tickets and more information. And on Twitter, at Real Don Jameson. Thank you, sir. And I'll be with Mr. Jim Florentine this Thursday in Derby, Connecticut at the River Rock Tavern. Nice. No better place to celebrate spring. And by the way, Gail, guess who uh, retweeted you today? Who? The band Urge Overkill. Get the fuck out of here. Chicago. Very, very exciting. Are you kidding? With no, Yeah. They're very, very. They want you to download their rock and roll album. Submarine. I will. Today. I will do it, Urge Overkill. I will. How did Urge Overkill weasel a plug into my segment? Those sons of bitches. <laughs> All right. The great Don Jameson. He's always a blast. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah.